Yeah. Hello, everybody. That means hi, are, by the way. Yes, we are gate and late. Uh, Fashionably late as usual. usual. Well, I'm. That was sick, really weird. And I'm I'm a little sick, and Spoon was having. And I hate people. Issues. Yeah, that's. <laughs> well, I, I this is what happens to me every time like, I I finish a huge project. Um, the video I just put out <clears throat> on Sunday. I mean, I worked on that forever a month, and it's like, I don't know. I think like sometimes when I, I finish a huge project like that, particularly one that was about pff, the topic matter that it was about, I feel like I just had to get through it, and then my body kind of collapsed a little bit and just had to die, uh, <laughs> somewhat. But uh, you you had to die. That's that sounds painful. Yeah, only slightly. Please I'll don't get, die. I'd lose a streaming buddy. Oh, I know. I'll be okay. It's just I'm just a little bit tired, I guess. Than anything. But I'm already working on my new project, which will be soon. And actually, what it's just, I was really happy because just right before the stream, I saw, because I didn't check Twitter today. Uh, I'd asked someone, I just sent out like a request for someone to help me find this old Nerdcore song. Because uh, the video is going to be about the gamer point out. And because particularly the ADL stuck their nose into it now. So now we have the oh, Canadian God. government, the uh, <laughs> Department of Homeland Security, <laughs> One of the FBI, hmm. yeah, the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI. Basically, the any government. anywhere you find the um, uh, you, you're gonna find the state somewhere right, but, close behind, which is totally not weird at all. Yeah. So, uh, <clears> so <throat> someone was able to find it for me. I, I think them on Twitter. Um, and it, of course, it was on New Real Imaginary at Twitter. Thank you. Uh, of course, it was on Newgrounds, but uh, how? Yeah, because I hear music. Like, I that's because I have it. music playing. But because uh, there's no way you can jets. talk about the uh, the whole history of the research and the actual evidence behind. Because they're back to the same old shit they've been doing for the last twenty years. Of uh, gamers are violent. Games cause violence. We need to crack down on gamers for whatever reason. Absolute nonsense, ridiculousness. You're uh, harassing a you... company by telling them to go away. Like that's really weird. By saying that I don't want to buy your slop. That's harassment, yes. right? Yes. Okay. I mean, they've been doing How dare you though. tell people about the stuff we tell people on our own website? It's like you don't think this is but weird do... at all? Like. Do you do you know who Jack Thompson is? Uh, a name sounds familiar. So, like, in order to tell the whole story of this, you kind of have to, at least in my opinion, you have to go back to the original, where, where this all started, which was in the early 2000s, which, uh, before the left decided that they wanted to put all this slop in video games and tell you what you can and can't enjoy in terms of your, uh, is it 102 coming back? 102? I don't know. I have to, oh, I have to see what's wrong with it. Uh, I'll check. Hang on, let me write a note about that, though. Maybe. Uh, um... <clears throat> Jack Thompson is a disbarred and disgraced former Florida attorney who used to constantly be on... Just he seethed about Grand Theft Auto for like a decade. Um, oh, to sue now Rockstar. I know why his name yeah, sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he so like in cahoots I, with Clinton as well? Probably. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember him being an absolute moron and lunatic. And everyone made fun of him what, back was, in the day. Was but he not the, the same stuff. I could swear his name... In it. I could swear his name was attached to the hot coffee mod. Probably. Do you know what it that is? Been. He he was a the hot coffee thing, the McDonald's thing. No, the the hot coffee. Thing. <laughs> oh wow, a nerd thing that I know that you don't. Holy shit, this is really really rare. Chat, well, you should I, appreciate this because. Um. What, 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 no, this. You no, you're about? talking about games. Yeah, I was talking about a lawyer though. I was talking about, talking about well, like McDonald's had to pay a bunch of and spilled hot coffee on themselves. Dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, but this this is like a game thing. This okay, is, uh, is GTA this? mod. There oh, we G go. Some of the chat. All right. See, I'm not familiar with it. Though. Yeah. Okay. The, holy shit. This is a rare moment. Well, like want. I know a nerd thing. That's, you out nerded that, me. Not. Holy shit. Oh my god. For that once. is a first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, a nude mod. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Of course. Oh, spoon. So you were being degenerate. I see. Um. No, I didn't say I downloaded it. Uh -huh, I'm just sure. aware of the thing. Why that? Uh huh. <laughs> I wish you could see my face right now, but he's judging you. You probably know what it looks like as well. It looks like Stewie yeah, whenever he looks know. at someone pissed I, I, off. I have know. a guess, I have a guess. Hold on a second. DRT, uh, DRT for five. Uh, Spoon, next time you talk to your Oshi, don't bring up the small hat. She has friends that aren't already hyper cancelled birds. <laughs> also great video. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Well... 
<clears throat> wait, wait, do you, do you mean Aiden or do you mean uh, Kirsch? Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't see what you were talking about. Yeah, DRT is king for five cents. Spin next time you talk to your Oishi. Uh, don't bring up the small hat. She has friends. Burbs. That's a great vivid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I'm not hyper cancelled. But there are there other I, I, I think birds? I think they mean like Kirsch. Because <laughs> oh. we did speak, <laughs> oh, we did speak yeah. briefly about the, the small hats on the on the stream. But oh, like I just okay. said, yeah. We have to no, talk about I, it a little bit uh, tonight. Oh, just briefly. Yeah, but, just briefly. No, because like I, I I was very careful about it because I just said they're not all like a hive mind. Because they're not. Like there's some people yeah. that can't there's, there's some Jews that can't stand the state of sure. Israel because I think it makes them look bad. Like you know? It's just like you can't talk about one particular group before uh, suddenly everyone is like the worst of that group. It's like, Jesus Christ, we're not this dumb. God's yeah. sakes, we have some new ones, you fucking weirdos. Everyone's kind yeah. of... I'm actually in a good mood for once. Really? Yes. This is rare for you. I'm glad you're yes, in a good mood, though. Yes, because my PC comes my, next my, week. Me being a little low energy. Because, sorry, my jeans are a little low and loose. So, yes. again, I got a bit of a cold. My, my PC comes just, next week after a whole freaking month of waiting. Right, right. And also, I get a new audio piece tomorrow, which, um, it if all goes, is. yeah. Well, speaking of waiting, in, in that GG video that, uh, good game, uh, the, which is not really going to be about Gamergate so much as it's going to be going over the research, which is sort of, I mean, it's interesting for me to do it. Everyone's sort of asked me to do it for years, something about this, because if you don't know, my area of expertise, both in doc and or in grad school, was uh, media psychology, emphasis, game studies. Um, I hope was one of the founding members of the uh, National Communication Association Conference Game Studies Caucus. So uh, it's kind of my thing, and I, I've never done a video on it. Because <laughs> I started doing the, writing down the research today, and it was like, oh, I could just go on autopilot. Like, <laughs> it's just, yeah, I haven't read this in 10 years, but... Boom. <laughs> just, all right, I remember all this research. <laughs> but there's some new research. There's some new research I have not read in a while, because I've not kept up with it um, as much as I used to. But yeah. That might, my point is that might not be out until after my trip. I'm going to be working on it while I'm away because I leave for the U.S. on the 7th of April. Uh, I will be on Tim Pool's show. And then from the, the 7th through like the 12th, I think, I th or the 13th, I think that's when everyone's leaving Vegas because that's the Geeks and Gamers, Nerdrotic, you know, kind of meetup time there in Vegas with all those kind of uh, Friday Night Tights, all those guys are going to be out there. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Gary who's reached a million subs. Yes, yes, that's a good, yes, yeah. excellent segue. Excellent Shout segue. Shout out to Gary Nerdrotic for, for a million subs. Drink, Let's people. Let's go. Yes, yes, yay. <laughs> Shout you out to Gary. Alcohol? I have alcohol somewhere, but it's over I there. I do, I do. Well, it means I have to I get do. up. <laughs> okay, they could. Hmm. Very calming song just came on. And it's like mildly right. sexy. It's Does it reflect whip. what's your hypothesis about gaming? Which? That'll be fun. Gaming. Zero fucks with that. Says he has a hypothesis about. Oh, you okay. Feel, you know, always feel free to send me if you have a hypothesis about gaming. I most likely have read a study about it, but. Um. Someone said, it's, 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 "Did my rugby team win?" Uh, no, slash rugby isn't on till. <laughs> Hold on. I think rugby isn't on till like June because like June internationals. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about that, but Zernegi. I'll see if they have announced anything publicly yet. I assume they have. I just don't... I don't know. I heard about it a while ago, obviously, because I had to book my tickets. But um, there's got to be public information about it, because it's a public meetup. Or part of it's public. <coughs> and then the 17th, I'm on Tim Pool's show. And then on the 1st, I'm on Lotus Eaters. So I will not be back till the 5th of May. So I'm basically, like, traveling for a whole month. Now, we'll still be able to stream, but it's going to be hard for me to edit video. So I, I doubt in two weeks I'm going to get it, this Gamergate video out. But it will be conclusive. Um, you know, there's not there's not a lot of nice things I like to say about myself. But there's one thing I can say, which is sort of positive, is that there's probably not many people on Earth who know more about this game study stuff than I do. Uh, that's in your so, Sort of my area of emphasis. Yes, no, but it's sort of my area of expertise. Like, that's it. You know, you have to you have to pick a, a specialization when you go to dog school. And I said, I want to do game studies. And my advisor was like, you got to be a little bit more broad than that. And I said, okay, media psychology, emphasis, game studies. <laughs> All right. I haven't talked about it in a long time. So that'll be fun. What's, uh, you know what else is fun? Uh, left Trump left annoying cope. everyone. Yes, Trump annoying everyone. Uh, leftoid cope. That's always fun. So I've got it's this like the rivers of blood speech from like Enoch Powell. Well, considering that I, I it's basically like that. 
Well, considering that the thumbnail is Trump in a bathtub of, of vaguely red liquid, and it's like if you, I don't remember who said in the chat that they they didn't like the uh, the the nipples in it. I said, well, like it was. I had to fight with the AI to get it to generate a, a image of a fat man in a bathtub with any colored liquid. It definitely would not do red. Uh, so <laughs> I had to go in and quickly go uh, <laughs> color it red really haphazardly in Photoshop. So here's this hilarious article you sent to me. You're gonna have to help me out a little bit soon today because my Again, I got a little cold. So, okay. here we go. From Vanity Fair. Attention, Biden and the Democrats. There's no cavalry coming from Mark McKinnon. Here oh, are three this. ways voters can help save the Republic in November. Okay, do you guys you have vomiting bags? Because, yeah, like, I read here. this, and like, <laughs> oh my god, this is, like, unbearably cringe and hilarious at the same time. Because, um, I haven't read a news piece in... I think this year. I think this is the first news piece yeah, that I've honestly read this year. Uh, yeah, but that's still three freaking months. Yeah, true. true so true. keep that in mind. Um, or it will be in a couple of days. And I, I read this, and it's something that Aiden and I have noticed a lot with people is they will contradict themselves often within like two sentences, often back to back in a way that makes you go, who the hell is writing this? It's like multiple people wrote it at different times and different states yeah. of inebriation. It's like, <laughs> how do you write this? It makes no freaking sense. And there was one bit in it that just made me laugh my ass off uh, during this. And oh my god, the intro is just, ah, I have an erection of whimsical. Because it's oh, really, a really dumb. whimsical erection? Huh. Yes, I have whimsical erections. <clears throat> The fact that there's music that is kind of funny right now playing just makes it that much funnier. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you were saying. Uh, uh, My erection's not that distracting. Uh, <laughs> well, it's more. It's, it's actually more the first line because I'm trying to find something. Uh, what? Joe Biden is not going to be rescued by the courts or by a few good speeches. That's because they're well, all shite. That. Yeah. Or by a new pep in his step, or by down ballot races with an updraft, or by the public's disgust with do nothing GOP led Congress. Dude, if Congress did absolutely fuck all the Congress, is the the approval of Congress would go up. That is legitimately true. I was more laughing at okay, it's time to wake up. Oh. Cover <laughs> uh -oh. here, but I look to Doctor Sherwood. Are we uh, moving? Joe it? Biden. <laughs> <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Joe Biden, wake up. 9 11. <laughs> One of the things that, that, that I strongly believe is Joe Biden. <laughs> wake up. Have you not seen what this? No. I should probably go home. <laughs> I'm tired. Me too. Joe Biden, wake up. Joe, 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 I'm tired. <laughs> Joe Biden. What's happening? <laughs> Joe Biden, I'm in the morning. What's happening? Joe, that's a bloody good edit. <laughs> I like the one with the song in red, but I, don't, I think that one would be harder to find. <laughs> Whoa. Mr. President, wake up. <laughs> Should have to pay nearly sixty four hundred dollars <laughs> more than you would today. Wake up, wake up, wake up. There you go. People actually think that man is president. I know. I'm sorry, but if you think that guy can do anything above running his own bath, which I still think he would need instructions for at this fucking point, I don't think he can do much of jack shit. <laughs> as is that you? Why is Absolutely that insane. Oh, don't put that evil on as. <laughs> which. <coughs> uh -huh. And that that guy, the fat guy in that video. <laughs> um, anyway, continue. Uh, let's see. We'll scroll up a bit. We got through the paragraph. Do nothing to go feed that car. Yeah, that's it. The, I know, I know. But I, I can't oh. see the thing. Hold on. Oh. That might be my fault. Hold on. Oh, there Vanity we go. Fair is horribly yeah, there is there a go. I know, I know. Earlier this month, Democrats got a fleeting sugar high from Biden's State of the Union address because he demonstrated coherence, clarity, and vigor. Well, he didn't Are you high when you write this shit? Over. When yes. uh, or you high? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, again, he, didn't fall, he didn't fall. He didn't fall asleep. He didn't fall over. He didn't uh, fall something. Die. So yeah. that's you know. 
doing he's gonna good, die within I the guess. next two years, by the way. Because yeah. he sped impressively, or spawn, sorry, with his political opponents. Uh, put him in a debate with Trump. Let's see how that goes. Before you say he spawn <laughs> impressively. Because he spoke persuasively about his administration's accomplishments. He's got accomplishments? Like what? Yeah. I can't name a single one. The, the, Seriously. Cr the crime bill? <laughs> <laughs> what, in 94? Yeah. Yeah, you mean the one that would legitimately actually do good right now? <laughs> yeah, but the one that yeah. if, if any, if the any irony, Democrat yeah. knew we voted for it would be furious. Yes. While also secretly wanting it at the same fucking time, which is uh, true, very bizarre. True, true. <laughs> yes, he, he's, his strong showing <clears throat> uh, gave Dems evidence to push back against he's so feeble he can't walk and chew gum narrative, but the following week his poll numbers were not better. In fact, some were worse. <laughs> So basically, I think he's the shit, and meanwhile, the rest of the country thinks he's complete dog's bollocks. Mm -hmm. Or just bollocks, rather, Obviously. not dog's bollocks, that's good, yeah. Indeed, there are now mountains of data that oh. Joe Biden is clearly running consistently behind Donald Trump. Yeah, no shit, we've known that for like a year yeah. now. There's a brand this new is not new. Poll that shows it's yeah. worse. You know who's polling the best against Trump? Via the new resolution uh, poll? I've got it up. We'll bring it up here in a minute. Is it, is it uh, JFK? Well, RFK, sorry. Uh, be weird. you might as well be JFK. It's, it's about that bad. Let me see where it is. Who is it? Um, is it someone I know? Don't tell uh, it's Clinton. It is... No, it's not working here. It's because yeah, here's the resume. Uh, it is in fact Big Mike. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael Obama. That's not gonna work. Yep. Trump's plus eight on Mike. And this was after the bloodbath stuff, right? Oh, so Trump is still up by nine points. Trump's up against Biden by 12. Gavin Newsom by 19. And Mike by eight. You do realize, like, Trump has no shot in the head of losing this. And the thing of it is, like... Is it about that? Yeah, but the, the thing is, like, you can sort of pull this in 2020 <clears throat> mm -hmm. when Trump was behind in the polls... Right? Yeah. If I'm he's behind, that more. if yeah, if he if he's behind in the polls and the country's like doing well, you you can sort of like pity a change maybe. But when the country is going to shit and you're screeching and gaslighting the entire fucking place, and this guy is ahead in every single fucking polls and has been for like four months now and is just consistently whooping Biden's ass, yeah, you're not gonna pull 2020 yeah, again. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. I think that the state apparatus wants this to happen and allowing it to happen. So yeah, just can recycle the, them. The, the veneer that there is some semblance of semblance of democracy. democracy, while they continue to tell their their yeah. base that uh, we need is, our republic is ruined if Trump wins. But at the same yeah. time, things are going. Oh my good insane. god! That's the world they're... is going to come to an end. American democracy is at an end. The experiment is over. And in my head, I'm like. But that's why that's why they're moving back please, on a whole bunch yes. of this woke stuff. Is because they're not really putting it away though. They're just uh, shelving it Disguising for a period it. of time, so that, they get, so that then they continue to boil the frog slowly. That's the whole point. They're so just going to throw a cage like, over this, or like a towel over yeah, a cage and go, not, what? That's like, not a parrot under there. Trump winning is not us winning, right? This no. is this is allowed for. This Trump is being, going full autocrat mode is, is us. Would be based, but he's not going to do that. We don't know that. No, he's not doing that. I wish he would, but he's not going to do that. But his sons might. <laughs> I mean, that, okay, and found the Trump Empire. I'd be down with that. <clears throat> but uh, I guess later on that. It is your destiny to become the American Who Caesar. Just said something really weird about Baron Trump. Who said something? Who said something he does really look like he he does look like an overlord. Like his side profile shot is like Jesus Christ. Like you have like the Caesar gene. Like you could put him on a coin. <laughs> oh God! Everyone in Hollywood is absolute cringe. Uh, go ahead. Hey, yeah, what were you saying? Uh, next slide. <coughs> oh, my apologies. Let's see. Indeed, there are now much of the data shows. Uh, la, 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 sake. People can cite polls, cite the 2022 midterms all they want as evidence that polling can be dead wrong. But now in November, there will be no Dodge decision to help rally the electorate and skew voting in a way that assures Biden the big lift he needs. And we're not just talking about his shoes because he fell over for the 50th fucking time <laughs> this week. He's got uh, new shoes. Did you see? Did you see his shoes? By the way, got new legs. I did. By the way, I have a pair of shoes like that because you know, uh, 
I bought some because of, I have some walking issues. I don't know how the fuck they're supposed to help you not fall. Because every time I tried to wear them, they made me feel like I was going to fall over. They're like, I'll show you later. They're like these arched shoes. They're arched in the front and the back. And it's supposed to make it so that you can like, you basically, the premise of this type of shoe design is that you barely have to put any momentum into walking on them. Like it basically gravity does it for you and, and momentum. But that made me feel very... The shoes that I Gravity's wear... Gravity's been working be... overtime when he's polling numbers. Oh. <laughs> on everything, I'd <laughs> It's very fruitful. Did we get to the paragraph? Yes. Scroll down. The big lift in these. Let's see. It's, uh, it's time to get real. It hurt me to say that line. It's, it's time to get uh, real. Because you know how they... <laughs> Yeah. It's like blue-minded Americans, otherwise known as morons, and the anti-Trumpers, yeah. just red-flavored morons, uh, have long held on to their legal fever dreams. They believe Trump would be denied the presidency yet again because of a court case or two. Good fucking luck with that. Because of a clear-eyed jury. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Because of a clear-cut conviction that would keep him out of office. That's not going to happen. But Trump's legal and political strategy of delay-delay has proven to be ruthlessly effective. Yeah, because that's never been done ever. Uh, it seems clear with every passing week that there will be no judicial conclusion to his array of cases until after the election. Yeah, when no one fucking cares anymore. Ironically, it's been the prosecutors in some case, in some instances, who have contributed to this predicament. Fulton County uh, <laughs> Willis may have had a formidable case in Georgia, but thanks to the hard-nosed GOP purity police, scroll down, please. Oh my god. And her astonishingly irresponsible and unethical behavior, she has effectively ensured. Bonnie under the bus. Yes, ensure that no trial be rescheduled for the foreseeable future. She has a great case, except she's horribly irresponsible and unethical yeah. as a human being. Like this, this is the person you went with. Like this, this is the person you yeah, put you all chose, your chips on. Like the, yeah, you you put all like, the you, all the eggs in her absolute trash. <laughs> There is still one outside possibility that Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's hush money case may proceed, but politically, it is the weakest of all of the pending Trump trials, and it's not hard to imagine the ex-president's team actually wanting that one resolved so they can say without holy merit, see the lengths to which Democrats and the judicial witch hunters have gone to try to deny Trump his right to a free and fair election. Very true. And what on earth took Mary Garland so long to be roused from hibernation? Um, he was suffocated at the border by the asses yeah. of a shitload of illegals. <laughs> and what on earth... Sorry. The problem is that the average voter who's not paying a close attention, which is damn near all of them, it's I wish you mean them, most voters... That's yeah. voting. That's called a democracy. I don't care if it's a republic or not. No one pays attention. Yes. Cognitive miserliness. Come on now. Roll down, please. Mm-hmm. The problem that the average voter who is not paying close attention, by which I mean most voters, may buy the argument at a certain point that all of these Trump trials are not indicative of the truth. That Trump is, of not. course... Yeah, of course, yeah. Is crooked a serial legal abuser, a venal, oh, that's, that's venal right. sorry, crime boss turned autocrat? But he hasn't turned that, autocrat, that, then, that then he wouldn't be in office, you considering idiot. Considering the, the lawfare they've been engaging in. Yes. Okay. Who feels he is above the law. Rather, he may come to believe that he's being pilloried by partisans throwing everything they can at him, hoping that something, anything will stick. I mean, that's what they're doing, so... That That is legitimately what you're duh. doing. <laughs> and now pay attention. Moreover, because no, 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 scroll up. Yeah, no, no, there we go. Moreover, there's evidence to suggest that the legal and political efforts to stop Trump have only made him stronger. With his base helped the case as a martyr, or base helped him cast him as a martyr, then may yes, be possible to lead more rest and a civil war. Now, <clears throat> here's the contradictory reactive. sentence. For a year now, political strategists, including yours truly, and members oh. of the pundit class, including yours truly, have proposed Hail Mary options to upend the 2024 election. Well, I mean, wait a minute, excuse me, isn't that the isn't that threat toward the, democracy? It, Certainly blow up that, the that is, that is a direct contradiction to what you just said like two freaking minutes ago. I mean, excuse me. <laughs> I thought yes. I thought that we had that the... We're going to make a martyr out of him. We're going to throw absolutely democracy. everything we can at it. Well, it, it is, but not in the way that they would like not, it to no. be. Again. Yes, it's yeah, Paul Little Gas and Black is so creepy to hear. <laughs> I've looked at a couple of uh, B options. First, I posited, posited, sorry, that an 11th hour independent candidate Decided. might emerge. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Cited, yes. <laughs> posited, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, if there's an independent candidate, it's going to draw votes away from Biden because no one wants to fucking vote for the guy. It's not going to draw no. votes away from Trump. I mean, Trump's lead is 
very, very solidified at this point because why the hell would you bother with a third party candidate that isn't going to win? One and two, no, but the, but Trump already has the, the, a record of being a decent president. Like where the said, fuck you haven't tried now? Actually, wants Trump to point all of them, pretending that they don't want theater. Yes, because think, oh dear God, Orange Man and your uh, your horrible drama. Please save us from our miserable shit ratings, because we suck ass. But they that, also that is effectively want, what they're saying. They need, but they want the rallying. You know, that's that's again why they're walking this shit back, so that they can move ahead with their more ultimate plans afterward. Yeah, they're right? playing the long game. This is this is the respite. Yeah. To make the it golden to, years. to give the American people some kind of idea that they do have any kind of power that voting fucking matters, but it doesn't. Yeah, it's gay. So. Sorry, I'm not trying I to see. be blackpilled. <clears throat> yes, unless Trump does something horrifying, like fire the FBI out of a cannon. <laughs> Which would be really based, by the way. I wish he would. I wish, again, I wish I wish he'd cross the Rubicon. But I won't. wish Trump would be more of an authoritarian. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Trump, I Trump, I want you to go to the executive and go, okay, I'm the one actually running the country. And if anyone crosses me, I will throw you in the gulags and fuck yeah, all of base, you. But it's not but again, it's, yes. that's a, I will put on a crown and just walk outside and go, I am the great MAGA king. Fuck off. Like yes. everyone will be like, Yes, yeah, okay, hail Caesar. Yeah. Great American Empire. Totally. Yes, good. yes. Yeah. Again, that would be cool, but it's not happening. King Trump. That actually has a yeah. nice ring to it, actually. <laughs> We should just meme him with a crown. Just, just get Trump just walk on stage one day with a crown just to see the reaction from people. It'll be really, really funny. The media would yeah. lose their shit, by the way. It well, would of course be, they would, but it would, it, but it would really be beneficial funny. for them. But you know this. Ultimately, it's beneficial for them because they make money off of it. Make money. Oh, yeah, of Trump, Trump has been their bread and butter now for eight years. Yeah. Anytime that there's not something to Trump to talk about, they lose money. Their ratings go down. They love yeah. Trump. Yeah, he's like a drug. They love all this theater. Yeah, he basically I mean, is it, their, it's, their it's, drug. A it's a distraction. It's all absolutely fucking political distraction. From the fact that they suck ass? Yeah, and that they're... they're... Yeah, they're terrible people. <laughs> and that none of it... That a lot of this doesn't actually matter in the long run. No. That it's just infighting to distract... It's bread and circus, yeah. Issues. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. And then the constant climate crisis. Oh, which yep. does not exist. And there's a complete load of bollocks. Mm -hmm. The second I suggested that the much-talked-about political organization No Labels might come up with a viable ticket, or in a maneuver meant to directly thwart Trump, might pass the electoral map and run separate favorite son or daughter candidates in a handful of swing states. That's kind of creepy. Neither option at this point seems likely, though I'd love to be surprised. You will be, with him crushing the shit out of Biden, because there's no one... Biden can... I don't at think this point time, surprised. Biden he will win like stuff. a... He may or maybe he is stupid. It depends on whether or not he's a true believer or if he actually... At this point in time, I don't see Biden winning more like 10 back. states. I don't know. <clears throat> it might be crushing. I wish I hope so, anyway. Neither option at this point seems likely, though. I'd love to be surprised. And while my typical rule of thumb for 21st century politics is to always expect the unexpected, the message of this column is the opposite. Don't count on surprises. Now, a chorus of uh, Washington Cassandras has begun to chime in, and with good reason. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders spoke ominously in a recent video. If Donald Trump is elected this November, no, dude, the fight against this, climate change... Oh, fuck off, Bernie. <laughs> yeah, it's the it. end of the people. I'm I'm like, dude, just fuck off. Like, no one cares it's about the this stupid end. climate thing. It's the oh, weather. Oh, my God. Oh. Let's see. The obscene levels we're now experiencing, income of wealth, oh. equality, yada, yada, says the same thing all over and over again. You Don't you have same three houses now, Bernie? Pedals. Yeah, including one I think that's uh, waterfront property. Ever since I spoke about income inequality, I have managed to buy three more houses. <laughs> and I have it a tax write-off. <laughs> Not a bad impression, actually. We can expect him and the Republican Party uh, to escalate the attacks on women's uh, reproductive health <laughs> in this country. The attacks! Uh, reproductive I health, say that, what you mean. Uh, man, who said this... Someone said it really basically the other day. They just said, oh, I see you mean murder. Yeah. I, I don't remember You've who done, I was listening yeah. to, but it wasn't someone I was expecting to say that. They were just really, oh, no, it was Disparu. Disparu just said, like, I was just watching a video of his, and he, he was just like, someone was going off in some article about, like, reproductive health, and he just said, oh, so you mean murder. You mean murder. And I was like, holy shit, okay, based. <laughs> yeah. This is good people. If Donald Trump is elected again, uh, it is likely that the almost 250 year experiment of American democracy is all but over. Dear God, I hope so. That would be fucking great. 
Eric Holder, President Barack Obama's former attorney, okay. stated it plainly and clearly, there is no cavalry coming. Yeah, there is. Trump is the cavalry. No miracle solution, except when his name is Trump. No saviors. Again, Trump. In the end, yeah. we, the American people, not any of our institutions. You need to couch your expectations on that, man. <clears throat> Who, me? Yeah, that Trump is the savior, that he's the miracle solution. He's just a dude, and he didn't save everything the first time. Well, to be fair, he's trying to run for re-election, and in four years' time, he's the, he can basically do whatever the hell he wants because he's going to kill Look, again, again so. you, you can call me wrong when he crosses the Rubicon, all right? Until then, <laughs> I have my reservations. <laughs> I am going to be a dictator for one day, and if, it's, if it requires more than one day, well, we'll just see where it goes. And then, <laughs> and then he just, like, does not leave office. I, I, I wonder if it's like, I'm going to be entrenched here until the day I die. <laughs> I mean, that's and what you and I would firing. like as monarchists, but that's... No, I just want him to just like kick everyone's ass, just because I think it'll be funny. Like Trump basically win the win the the loyalty of the army and then start crushing um, basically every entity of the regime in uh, in in ruthless um, beer hall puts kind of fashion. Yeah. Because yeah. it would be really really funny, and also the media would lose their mind. The rest of us would be like, well, the state's small and it's more. Power in the executive, and Trump isn't going to go now. I don't see the bad here. Quote, the, the, might bad in the future, so, but we don't care. Which? Quote is so, this quote is just so cringe. terrible. In the end, we, the American people, not any of our institutions. What is that? Like what? Like the FBI and all the other Fed boy agencies that are all on your side <laughs> have to save our democracy by voting in defense of that democracy this fall. We are the cavalry. The responsibility is ours. <clears throat> and then when, because they're not going to let They make Biden it sound like they're in a war. He's, he's, yeah. <clears throat> it's a really cringe that's, one. That's, but that's that's intentional. To create the us versus them mindset. Bullet this, and this ballot have the same democracy. etymology. All of which suggests it's time to enlist every voter in the fight. By that I mean uh, voters the dead themselves ones too. have to step up. Yes, in record numbers. That's including the dead. <laughs> Shoes for industry. Shoes for the dead. Shoes for industry. Hi, I'm Joe B. Hey, what chances of returning to cease war veteran have? And I always forget the next. Fine, fuck! Uh, something uh, more sugar and that meal you've been dreaming of. Think about it. Then take off your shoes. Now you can see how increased spending opportunities, spending opportunities means harder work for everyone and more of it too. So take off your shoes for industry. Sorry, my autism got ahead of me a little bit. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> I got I got uh, taken over by Fire Sign Theater. <clears throat> I was wondering, like, what the hell are you talking about, woman? <laughs> It's a comedy record from 1969 that predicted everything. <laughs> uh, Aiden is a strange Trump. individual. Yeah, the only way to beat Trump and diminish his political power is not in the jury box, but at the ballot box. I'd like to- Oh, yeah, really? Because all of your cases against him are nonsense? And everybody <laughs> knows it. Either. I'd like to propose a three-point plan of action. Will you go ahead, Spoon? Is he first, each voter has to become a kind of lightning rod in his or her circle of friends, family, and community, reinforcing the significance of voting itself. Okay. Volunteer in your precinct, yes, for the Republican Party. Become a poll worker and encourage your friends to sign on as well. Seek out ways to assist those who might otherwise have challenges get into their polling stations, like because they're deceased. Travel to swing states to help with... Uh... Hmm? That sounds creepy. Travel to swing illegal. states, yes, to help with the get out the vote campaigns. Uh, that sounds potentially illegal. Yeah, that's that sounds kind of sus. Canva canvas for candidates you believe in, dude. If I was in America right now, I'd be hanging out with Scott Pressler. And just saying like, yes, I, I I will help get Trump elected just because it would really really amuse me. Uh, transform your <laughs> citizenry into democratic action. Ah. Uh... The cringe. Cheat. It's his second. Spread the gospel the of gospel. democracy. I it it really is their religion. Holy shit! They don't even. There's just no. To quote the famous Hans Hermann Hopper, it's a god that failed. God, yeah. I mean, Hopper was right as usual. Yes. American democracy, as Sanders pointed out, is an experiment. Yeah, it's, it's failed, by the way. And then each voter who has an active online presence need to understand and convey to others the reality that if Trump is elected, democracy won't be the only experiment at risk. I'm listening. Go on. Uh, uh, yeah. Also at risk will be reproductive freedom. Keep tarping on that one. Keeping your legs closed is not a freedom, by the way. It's fail. It's just like a standard. No, I want to be. I need to be able to murder. 
Let's see. Women's rights across the board. Vote Trump immediately. <laughs> and in like record droves. Nice. The 19th Amendment <laughs> must, be amel- uh, must be eliminated immediately. <laughs> Free and fair elections. <clears throat> well, uh, the separation of powers. That doesn't work, by the way. I fucking all. The peaceful transfer yeah. of powers. <clears throat> well, it's, it's always stable outside of the bureaucracy, anyway. Uh, civil liberties, which are shite, by the way. The Civil Rights Act can fuck off. Rainbow rights uh, don't discri- need to exist. Uh, workers' rights, no, exploit all of them, bring back slavery. Uh, protection against hate speech, that's okay, just free speech, shut hardcore. up. That's free speech. Uh-huh. Uh, protections against discrimination based on race, ethnicity, uh, race, ethnicity, uh, race, you uh, do I, this. I can't talk. Your protections race, mean that you're allowed ethnicity, to discriminate, that's what it and means. national origin, except if you're white, in which case you can back off. That's but, <laughs> Re- respect for the rule of law, unless you happen to be near a border. Uh, respect for Americans right. abroad, um... Respect for America. No one has respect for America now. What the fuck are you talking about? Respect, respect for. for I think no it's because respect. they mean like. Hey, uh, uh, well, the thing that's crazy about that too is that like you know. Oh shit! Have... Amy's in the box. What's that? What's up, Amy? Hello. Uh, hello, Amy. Uh, Amy's cool people. Nice to hear. Yes. Uh, see you. Um, it's it's uh, it's just the, the image for America. For America. Growing, growing up in the states, you know what I mean. Like people I take the really piss out of America right now. Well, I don't understand. I didn't understand why the rest of the world hates us, and then you don't live from the U.S. for a couple of years. You're like, oh, okay, that's why. Uh, <laughs> oh. Then you're like, wow, I hate a, I I hate us too now. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Respect for public education. Why have you seen the state of well, it? I was gonna say. We're gonna put off. more drag queen story hours in, in preschools. We'll get into that. Freedom of the press. You don't have freedom of the press. The press is a like regime outlet. Fuck off. The, yeah. The Vaccines. Press is a nightmare. Vaccines. That's a really what? weird one to put really in there. Really specific. Real specific to put in there. Oh, well, we'll get into this. Uh, but uh, Trump's not the only one who they're, they're trying to uh, get up on charges. Do you know who they're trying to, to uh, file charges against now? Bolsonaro. You know why? Oh, well, uh, because he told the cause to not phone vaccinated. Off. He's not vaccinated. I'm not joking. We'll get to the article later. All right, fucking crazy. Holy shit, okay. They're still doing an, in- <laughs> an independent justice department. Get the fuck no, out of That's laughable. Here. By independent US media, military, uh, when you control it, yes, okay. Yes, U.S. military, that's woke as shit, by the way. Interior department, which can fuck off. Energy department, which is not working, by the way. Like, drill, baby, drill. CDC, which is cringe and gay. EPA, which sees the weather as a threat, it can fuck off. And the FCC, which I hope a base of African f- skull fucks into oblivion. Um, safeguards ensuring freedom of religion, religious tolerance, and separation of church and state. We don't have that. What well, the unless hell are you unless you're about? Christian, then. <laughs> no. Yes. They're, 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 what are you talking about? Islam, I guess. Oh, they will go after Islam <clears throat> the second they find out that Islam is not a fan of the rainbow people. No, no, no. It, it'll be a long time. Uh, by the are you time sure about that? We get to that. Yeah, because uh, the Muslim immigrants will still vote for their bullshit because they're going to give them gibs. Same. I mean, it's the same shit that has happened. Okay. So like yeah, I suppose this is merely a, a partial list. list. Yeah, this is merely a partial list of the rights, entitlements, departments, programs, and privileges that may be taken away. I would be okay with all of those things going. Yeah, me too. All protections all going, and women can no longer vote. Slash it, slash it. I swear out. Let's Watson. go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, see. Third, and finally, choose one of these at-risk aspects of democracy, one facet that is near and dear to you, and take it with you into the polling booth. It could be reproductive <laughs> freedom. It could God, be respect okay. for education, both of which are shit, by the way. Uh, it could be the effort to close the gap on income inequality. How about you close the gap on IQ? <clears throat> well, which will never close happen. close the gap on your legs since you keep talking about this abortion shit? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> But take that one <laughs> flag and hoist it high. Cherish it. Vote for it. I feel like we should make a flag with a crown and Trump's face on. <laughs> did you not, did you not like my, my monarchy, my American monarchy flag and how based it was? No, we could just Hold put up. Trump's face on. It'd be funny. We could just put Trump's face. In some, you don't have to be happy with the two choices on the ballot this November. I'm very ecstatic with one of them, by the way, just because how much it pisses you off. But you will yeah, know, eternally, that's, that's yeah. A large portion of your. Uh, but you will be eternally unhappy with the outcome if you fail to act responsibly. If you fail to cast your vote for the guy who may be old, but he's not a madman. Okay, what? so that's Trump. 
Trump yeah, is old, but he's not that, a madman. Biden is yeah. old and is a madman. And is... Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, Biden is old and senile madman. Right. If you don't take... If you don't take... If you don't take the talk about Trump's dismantling of democracy with utter seriousness, then just fuck around and find out. That is like an ironically based way to end that, just for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. They well, they have no. <clears throat> I can, can I can I quote that last one? Just put it on Twitter and just so like absolutely based, just for all the wrong reasons. Just yeah, fuck they have no idea why it's. Based. Oh, Trump will end democracy. Fuck around and find out. Okay, just Trump, please. Here it is. I would really like that. That'll be funny as hell. Here, here, here's my here's my American. <laughs> I thought I always like to. I think it, it will represent. <laughs> but yeah, just replace the eagle with Trump's face in the center. Is this the one that I edited? <laughs> yeah, I know I made this. I made this monstrosity all by myself. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> this is I, curse. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, true, but you. I did edit this one that you gave me. Um, it, yeah, I think... Do you remember? Mm, I think you did, but I don't remember... I, I don't remember if it was this one, though. What I posted on Twitter. <laughs> I could swear I, I... I told you to move the crown or something. I think this is after... Maybe not. Maybe... I mean, anyway. Speaking of Biden being the, the best choice, fuck around and find out with our democracy. Biden's got a brand new pair of shoes. Um, oh, like the freaking spacewalking things. Yeah, oh yeah, he's got the, the moon shoes. <laughs> yeah, this is like shit you walk on the moon with. This is like gravity or some shit. Oh, this is where you stumbled on. I saw Salty oh. talk about it. <laughs> it's like some... Dude... <laughs> just, just... Like, okay, I think this is unironically, this is very close to the pair of shoes that I have. <laughs> no joke. But because they, like I said, they they're supposed to help it with momentum, so you don't have to like. It's supposed yeah, to help it's with a, momentum. There's a joke about his polling numbers in there somewhere. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, there sure is. Uh, there's <laughs> lots of jokes there. But uh, I don't like them though because it makes me actually feel. Dorky. Meant for a hiking walk. No, no, it makes me feel less stable than having just the totally. Meant for a hiking, shoe. walking, and lifestyle. What the fuck is the third no, one? No, they're mean? not. They're meant for physical therapy. Well, I mean, he does need that, so I suppose there is. Yeah. Supposed to help him with his falls and stumbles. All right, we got those moon shoes. There we go. <laughs> That's all that was. Uh, your countryman. Back at it again. Ah, uh, yes. Don Lamont. Based autism. <laughs> we don't agree on this. Yes, you want censorship and I don't. No, I don't want censorship at yes, all. Yes, you, you do. No, I want responsibility. I think What's there it? is. I think... Oh, what a little weasel. I want responsibility. What, how, how does that manifest, Don? There. You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship, you want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Oh, that's like all you can say is no, n no, uh, 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 I want responsibility. How was that? How would that manifest, Don? True. I think that there's right and wrong. Okay. And, and I think that, want censorship. and, I, and uh -huh. I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person who, of consequence to the world with what you do, that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. Okay, so there's right and wrong, and you have a responsibility to dictate what's right How and many wrong. hours you did you sense. jackasses lie about Trump, and you're talking to somebody else about responsibility? Get the hell out of here, I mean, you two-faced piece of shit, Don Lemon. We knew that was 100% coordinated with all these media outlets and the U.S. government's multiple different, uh, you know, multi-letter agencies to to work with Twitter to remove the Hunter Biden laptop story. That was censorship. That's right yep. versus wrong. Absolute according bollocks. to Donald. That's uh, he has used all these weasel words though to try and get around it. Absolutely ridiculous. You don't see that responsibility. No. Um, I think the we, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law. Um, and if people want the law changed, they should talk to the electric talk to their elected representative and get the law changed and then we will adhere to the law okay but if you want us to go beyond the law that is that is uh, us deciding to be that's what they censors. did before so and i'm against censorship i'm i'm in favor of freedom of speech yeah and freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like otherwise it has no meaning exactly nice uh by the way did, did, did you see this booty blasted over that lemon was mm -hmm. the, you see the twitter link i just sent hey, you
Don Lemon demanded cyber, cyber, Tesla Cybertruck. Wowie. Five million advance equity in X before Elon Musk canned him. Sources. Oh yeah, I did hear about this. Don Lemon demanded the sun, the moon, and the stars from SpaceX boss before being unceremoniously dumped this week. The post has learned. The XCNN anchor sent over an astronomical wish list. Elon Musk, uh, during contract talks, to host a show on the billionaire's social media platform, including a free Cybertruck and five million upfront payment on top of an $8 million salary to host a show on Twitter, an equity stake, state, stake in the multi-billion dollar company, and the right to approve any changes in X policy as it relates to news content. What an, what an absolute moron. How, I, I can't even fathom being that egotistical to think that you're Don Lemon and you think that you have this much power to, to make a request like that of Elon Musk. Jesus Christ. The, the 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 tweet that I put on Twitter, I just I said to them, the amount of slurs that went through my head when I read this, I would make the apartheid regime look like the fucking Shire. <laughs> like you guys, like the F and the N would immediately came to mind. Yeah. Like I, I just look at your behavior and this like how up your own ass are you to think that you uh, can go to this guy, well, right? You can go you know, to Elon Musk. Probably pretty deep. Touche. But you you were unceremoniously tanked from CNN because you're a shit-headed asshole, and yeah. you're gonna go to the guy that has the most base CNN platform in the you. world, and you think you're gonna demand this kind of shit. Nobody watch. Why the hell would anyone watch you on a mainstream platform that you couldn't even pull an audience, right? But you're gonna go to a place that has a bigger audience that wouldn't watch you in the first place and think that you're going to demand anything from them. Why? The, what world do you live in? Because, because he's, he lives in his leftoid echo chamber bubble where he thinks he's never been told no his entire life. Clearly. Imagine yeah, being Don Lemon and thinking that, thinking that you're worth $13 million plus a stake in this company. He's worth and 13 freaking bucks. To, and, and, and the uh, ability to make policy decisions over it. How do I know Don Lemon is a bottom? I don't know. Gaydar. Just gay sense. I'm half of a gay, so. <laughs> anyway, so this is interesting. This is the New York Times. Because he doesn't who, have the balls uh, to be a top. True. Who made this piece. Turns out the deep, deep state is actually kind of awesome. This is so uh, it's so weird when they do stuff like this. Did you see this? Did you say this to me? This is I a did, thing. yes. I will totally obliterate the deep state. I will fire... Donald Trump is obsessed with the deep state. The deep state I think the deep, deep state, state is obsessed with him. The deep state is destroying our yeah. nation. Either the deep state destroys America or we destroy the deep state. And many Republicans are Based. widening his paranoia. These unelected bureaucrats ruining this country. From a cabal of security agents hey, to a sick political class that hates our country. If elected, Trump's vowed to gut the federal government. Reinstate the Schedule F executive order and, quote, fire rogue bureaucrats. But who are these bureaucrats and what makes them so dangerous? We needed answers, so we took a trip across America. In 100 God. yards, take the exit. In search of the people behind this threatening entity. <laughs> First stop, Huntsville, Alabama. Sure looks like some nefarious government this activity is, This happened. is unbelievable that they would run something like this. Who made this? The New York Times. It's of here. course it is. Yeah. You have reached your destination. Meet Scott Bellamy. I am a mission manager in the Planetary Missions Program Office. He drives a Nissan Titan 4x4. Who cares? He's loved Star Trek oh since god. he was a kid. Oh my god. Yeah, me too. Of course I have a favorite character. It's either Captain Kirk or Mr. Spock. And he may have quite literally saved the planet from annihilation. Oh, <laughs> oh, now we're back to this shit. It never ends, it never ends. It's just perpetual nonsense forever. And I mean, this is just blowing smoke up these people's asses. Like, oh, here's the deep state. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, this is not what anyone's talking about. Oh, the deep state's actually based and actually cool. It's kind of awesome. Some guy we found works for some space program. Yeah, that's the deep state. Okay. I mean, this is just, this is insane. This is actually insane that they would run this. 
eventually. You see, Scott managed a mission called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And back in 2022, what does this have to do with the deep his thing? team used your tax dollars to pull off something kind of incredible. You have an asteroid. Uh, and... Yes, okay, yes, that's... yes. Remember when you fired this guy? Remember when you fired that one guy who actually landed the fucking thing on the asteroid because he had a shirt with a sexy woman on it? Remember that? You're going to talk about that part? Uh, oh, no? yeah. I remember that. Mm hmm. Fly the spacecraft into the asteroid and try to change. Why do they the fired him, but they, they publicly lambasted him? That asteroid. It's like playing pool in space. Everybody was holding their breath. You know, this is the moment of truth. Did we hit it? We got it? And we have and impact. We <laughs> we they knocked an asteroid off its course. Proving something that it... Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. What does this have to do with, with anyone involved in what was, is commonly known as the deep state? The Department it's of not. Justice, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA. What, what the fuck? Previously only been done in movies. Saving the world from an Armageddon scenario. Potentially. Okay, that was pointless. Next, we traveled deep into the swamp itself. Washington, D.C. This is the EPA. Where's the DOJ, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the DHS? This is Radhika Fox. I am the assistant administrator for water at the Environmental Who cares? Protection Agency. She loves Pilates, <laughs> making salads, and watching the Taylor Swift Eras tour on TV. Oh with my her god. Family. Uh, I think we're all pretty 1989. Oh, and she led an well, operation to make our drinking water. Yeah. Her voice and face is the most like glaring <laughs> disparity that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, it is. Lead free in 10 years. That's the dream. Worried and angry about lead contamination, oh. residents of Newark, New Jersey are demanding This is not the neurotoxin. Yeah. This is not the deep state. This is like one yeah. hell of a fucking fluff piece. Yeah, Jesus. It is. This uh, uh, is... But it has nothing to do with what, what anyone means when they say deep. Even a little Yes. Bit. I mean, this is just pathetic. Like, oh, right. It's also, like, kind of shameful. out to get me. This is who he's actually talking about. He's talking about this lady and this and this dude who works at yeah, the no, 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 no aerospace agency. Uh-huh, sure. Sure thing. Sure thing, Jan. <laughs> ...that can cause irreversible brain damage. Folks are drinking out of these pipes right now. Every single American child... Hey, do you want to worry that's the biggest issue with the dirty pipes and the bad mm -hmm. uh, improper drinking water? Uh, it's places like Dearborn, Michigan. It's places like Baltimore City. All run by Democrats. Hey, Scrum. We'll soon be able to turn on that faucet and remind oh, them that oh, the water gone. they're drinking is clean. When President Biden announced a nationwide plan to remove lead water pipes, Radica's team made it happen. Yep, that's right. Water utilities would be legally required to replace all remaining lead pipes. Nine million in ten years or less. Hey, how's that going in Dearborn? That's been, what, 10 years? I think the water there is still undrinkable. <laughs> it's an expensive bet. I mean, I'm laughing, I'm laughing because it's the Democrats who run all that shit, and this is, this is their fluff piece to, to suck their own dicks. $50 billion. But those benefits are truly priceless, because it's the well-being of this nation that's at stake. You want to replace your own water pipes? You got the skills to launch an asteroid-deflecting spacecraft? No. That's why your tax dollars pay experts like Radhika oh, and Scott. Oh, yeah, okay. Important work like this is happening all over America. From helping 2 million <gasps> victims of the opioid crisis. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, that's uh, great in West yeah, Virginia. That's, <laughs> fuck off. that's going absolutely fantastic in West Virginia. Wowie. Who's buying this shit, by the way? Uh, People who already believe this, so that they can go to the Christmas party and tell their, like, Republican, uh, I don't know, uncle, that actually, um, actually, the deep state <laughs> is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, it's... Engineering major breakthroughs in nuclear Oh, fusion. God. Yes, oh, Galactic and Empire, uh, Shlom, that's like, it's just, a, it's just elite ball washing. That's, f that's a yeah. really good fuck way of putting that, because that's absolutely fucking true. <laughs> Portable for 30 million people. Yep, the deep state is hard at work making America great. Oh my Just god. Just because we don't know about it doesn't make it... What do you mean you don't know about it? You're talking about the... What was it? Uh, the EPA and the uh, some space uh, uh, contractor. It's nothing to do with the, D the, the DHS or the DOJ or the FBI or the CIA or any of these actual organizations that do deep state shit that Trump was complaining about, that anyone complains yes. about. It's, this is just insufferable. Suspicious. So disingenuous. Have arrived. Our final stop, Chicago, Illinois. Yes, it is propaganda. Exactly. Really bad propaganda style. as well. 
Yeah. You're making it great again, right? I am the acting director of enforcement for the wage and hour division for the Midwest uh, Regional Office for the U.S. Department of Labor. I had to take a breath, yes. She still eats Lucky Charms for breakfast. Who cares? Trains for marathons and loves Latin dancing. Cumbia, bachata, cha-cha-cha, you name it, I did it. And hey, Scrub, I want to tolerate elf racism in my chat. <laughs> and she uses your tax I dollars will, to get kids out of work. <laughs> in dangerous slaughterhouses. 13, 14, 15 year olds the working on the kill floor, cleaning body parts, right? Animal carcasses. They're working with machinery such as skull splitters, bone splitters. Nancy and her colleagues raided slaughterhouses in several states and found more than 100 children working illegally. Last year, their employer, Packers Sanitation, was fined $1.5 million, one of the largest child labor cases in American history. Kids would die, kids would get limbs amputated. I don't even want to imagine uh, what would happen if no one did this job. These guys work for you, but Trump wants them working for him. Oh my God. No, I don't want them to have jobs. <laughs> I, I don't want to <laughs> slash it, slash it, slash it. I don't want any of these agencies to exist. Well, th th Trump this is this is so pathetic, by the way. The it thing is. like this it, it is, is like these people like we're gonna find like the most innocent bureaucratic jobs ever, and yeah. then we're gonna say this is the people that Trump has his eye on. It's like get the fuck out of here! It's like pathetic. who do you think is buying yeah. this? It's it's cringe. Again, the people who already believe it, so that they can so that they can take this and send it to the, to their like. 75 year old freaking aunt. Vaguely, to their neocon uncle on Facebook and be like, haha, showed you. This is freaking This is what a bad man wants to get rid of. <laughs> oh, no. At yes. least thousands of these people that he calls pejoratively the deep state. Schedule F would allow Trump to fire up to 50,000 of them. That's a nice start. Keep going. And replace them with like minded people. That's not what you've all done. I, I, I would rather he just fire them and replace them with nothing. Exactly. I don't, yes, replace them with nothing. I think that, that would be the ideal plan. Yeah. Sometimes it's really hard to, it, it, to it, read the By the way, where, you know, you know yeah. what happened if Trump did this? The immediate thing yeah. that the, the, the media would do goes, oh my god, the unemployment numbers are going up. It's like, yeah, because you just yeah, fired right. bureaucrats, you fire dumbass. Fake jobs, yeah. Yes. You, know, hmm. you feel like we as public servants are being attacked. Now, this doesn't mean do that anything. Americans can't have do different anything. ideas about how big the federal government should be. Uh, it sounds like that is your perspective. That, 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 that actually is your perspective. Times. What the hell okay. are you talking about? After all, there's no shortage of examples of real government overreach and overspend. But Trump's telling really? us to like expect the worst from people in government. When the truth is, they're actually... That, that's that, okay, so that, that's like a caveat. So when you do um, persuasion theory stuff, you have to throw in that little, oh no, see, I understand the other side. It's called inoculation theory. Uh, no, it doesn't work though. <laughs> Sorry. I just call it no, being gay. That was awful. Yeah, that's true. Let me uh, get the super chats up till now, and then we'll move on. Uh, Aramaic Discourse for Five says just started a blacksmithing classes. Oh, cool. My goal is to develop my skills and make a crown worthy of a king. Very base, dude. <laughs> Slosher uh, gave five gifted uh, Broken Crown memberships. Thank you, man. Let's see. Oop. Uh, Looney Lenny for two says Dev will never release the Canadian trucker video. No, he will not. Not ever. No, he won't. Nope. Slosher for 10 says, Did you guys read the Politico article on J.D. Vance and the New Right types? Interestingly enough, it wasn't a total political hit piece, which is strange coming from the regime media. I've not read that, but let me write that. Uh, thank you. Solon the Lich, for, who's been a member for two months, says, A drumph giving commies the full lucif they were talking about, or they were crying about? Please, uh, Spoon, stop. I can't uh, walk around this much disturbance in the force in the pan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Minnesota Fats, who's been a member for 14 months, says, I said it before, I'll say it again. The U.S. Republic is too large for the average person to keep track of every issue. Absolutely. That's why Ooh. we're not in favor of voting. Um, empire requires emperors. Yes. Thank you. Rick for two says, M&M's without me chorus equals Trump. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Will Grief, uh, Will Grief for five says, this Meet the Deep State is the worst episode of Cribs ever. <laughs> for sure. DRT is King for five says, Section 31 traitor to the Federation covering for the actual spy agencies. Neither Kirk or Cisco would approve this cover-up. Absolutely not. Maybe maybe Janeway would, I don't know. Uh, Galactic Emperor Schlarm for two says, This New York Times piece is elite ball washing. Yes, it is. 
Uh, Slot Shiver 10 <laughs> says, yes, NPC Trump, when Orange Man says he wants to get rid of the deep state, it means you'll get hit by an asteroid and have lead in your water. Christ preserve me. Eps, I know, exactly. And Hot Top Over 5 says, the federal government employs 3 million uh, people. Here are two that spent at least some time doing something vaguely helpful. Precisely, precisely. Yes, that is elite ball washing. Mm. For in 1995. Right. Uh, and like I said, they're not just coming after Trump. They're coming after Bolsonaro. Indicted for his first time over alleged falsification of vaccination status. Former President Jair Bolsonaro was formally accused Tuesday of falsifying his COVID-19 vaccination status. This is from yesterday. Right? Who cares? They're still doing this shit. I know. Marking the first indictment for the embattled far-right leader with more allegations potentially in, the, in store. The federal police indictment released by the Supreme Court alleged that Bolsonaro and 16 others inserted false information into a public health database to make it appear as though the then-president and his 12-year-old daughter and several others in his circle had received COVID-19 vaccines. Police detective Fab Fabio Alvarez Shore, hmm. <clears throat> hmm. who signed the indictment, said in his report that Bolsonaro and his aides changed Are you trying to apply something with that? Order no. Uh, to issue their respective vaccination cert uh, certificates and use them to cheat... I smell hats. <laughs> the investigation found several <clears throat> false insertions between November 2021 and 20 December 2022, and also many actions of using fraudulent documents. The detective said that in the indictment that Bolsonaro's aide de camp, Morio Kidd, Sid, I don't know, uh, told investigators the former president asked him to insert the false data into the system for both himself and his daughter. Sid also said he delivered the vaccine certificates to Bolsonaro personally. During the pandemic, Bolsonaro was one of the few world leaders who railed against the vaccine. <laughs> I mean, duh. He openly flouted health restrictions and encouraged other Brazilians to follow his example. So that, that's why he didn't get it. I, I mean, this is this is like just the idea that they're going to do this post facto come by and say, well, you didn't take the, I mean, you know, if they're going to do this to Bolsonaro, it will be everyone else. I mean, anyone's on the chopping block. Then, in right? Brazil. Yeah. I, I, from what oh, I know. Well, the, in the, Brazil uh, now, but yeah, the, right? the, the, um, the Supreme court in Brazil is horribly mm. corrupt, <laughs> like insane levels of corruption. It's amazing <laughs> that he fucking got there in the fucking first place. Yeah, I, I just, look, whenever I see something like that, it's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, that, that'll be where you stop with that. Government power never continually grows and uh, becomes more and more cancerous. So, main title of today's thumbnail. The Trump bloodbath quote, right? I haven't even seen this. You I'm know, aware of the quote because it made video. the news. Yeah, mm -hmm. it made the news. Let's just, here it is. I, although I hate to bring it. here it is. Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business. In automobile country, manufacturing business. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine. Who could possibly get confused? Yeah. Who could possibly get confused about what he said? He's talking about the automobile industry. Very explicitly. Here's how it's reported by the news. Trump says there'll be a bloodbath if he loses election. Predicts bloodbath if he loses. Bloodbath if he doesn't get elected. Bloodbath. At least CNN had the temerity, Trump said, astonishingly, the, 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 to Trump include says auto some industry. migrants are not people and predicts bloodbath if he loses. New York Times, you absolute scum fucking cunts. He did actually say that, though. Which? But I'll, I'll get into that. The not people But some thing. migrants are not people? <clears throat> okay, yes. Yeah, okay, he was, but he's talking about the, the cartels. Yes, but then to put it in the same headline as predicts right, bloodbath right. if he loses implies that he's it saying it's because... Speech. Yes. But that implies that the um, that the migrants are the one ushering the bloodbath, which is kind of no. true, actually. 
And this was, of course, Elon's tweet. Because, again, they, they act like they are all NPCs. Uh, they, they all have the same programming. They have the same things to say. Yes. I call See, them scripts because the I think it's funnier. Yes. Yeah. Script yeah, over time, one, over time, the newspapers have been fading away in relevance. Not gone, just as writing and mailing paper letters still happens, but no longer the way most people know and on. Yeah. Yeah, it's because we have real-time really. information. Yeah, and they just lie. They just fucking lie. Here's Biden Harris HQ put out this statement about it. Tonight, Donald Trump said there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected, and that if he lost, there would be no more elections. Uh, he he's saying that you're I'm, I'm inclined the to believe that actually. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't think it's possible. Uh, after opening the general election by meeting with authoritarian leaders and rallying alongside conspiracy theorists, Donald Trump continues to praise dictators. Such as whom? G? Your pal? Okay. I mean, I didn't like that either, but he's trying to make a deal, I guess. From Putin. Promise to pardon political violence. You mean the people the that- The January 6th people who did nothing years. wrong. Yeah. And launch racist attacks against black and brown Americans. While they voted for him more in 2020 than they did in 2016. Yeah. He's like, the, he's like, he's like, Trump, like, Trump is a horrible racist, by the way. He gets more people of color to vote for him. him. Yeah. Hey, he's I like, he really sucks at being racist. Uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, who Trump supporters called to hang for not overturning the election, not really, uh, came out against Trump. Again, like, this, I wish this they is, did. It's just so much lying. So much lying. This is who Donald Trump is a loser who gets beat by over 7 million votes. Uh huh. Sure. If you How think he dead? won with, with with that kind of voting prowess, then you should have no problem beating yeah, him now. You should you should win handedly. Yeah. Uh, Tell me why why is it that uh, Trump is winning every single poll? Yeah. Instead of why appealing to a is... wider mainstream audience, doubles down on his threats of political violence. I'm trying to put him in prison for last. I don't know if you, you noticed you, this, but you've had like, people in his, prison for four years. His mainstream appeal is actually a lot greater than Biden's. Yeah. yeah. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's not he a. That's not a good. Jan um, six. Again, January six was a joke. Uh, a bunch of rowdy unarmed Trump supporters stormed the Capitol. There is no way in hell Walk a bunch around. of unarmed people. Shit on Nancy Pelosi's desk. Uh, uh, that's kind of base, actually. But but the idea that they were somehow going to storm the Capitol and stage a successful, bloodless coup against the most armed yeah. country in the world is just absolutely retarded. Anyone who believes that is just never vote or speak because yeah. you're clearly a moron. Yeah. But the American people are going to give him another electoral defeat this November because they continue no, to reject his extremism, his affection for violence, and his thirst for revenge. Such a lot. This is coming. For this, this is coming does, does anyone remember? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Does anyone remember when Biden said like half the country is the freaking problem? These MAGA extremists. Yeah. 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 I don't remember Trump saying any of that. Remember? Yeah. He, his his Trump, Dr. Brandon speech. Uh, yeah. Yes. Have you noticed that Trump never attacks the electorate? No. No, because he Ever. wants everyone to like him. Yeah. Yes. Whereas the politicians are a bunch of lying scum fuckers. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You do realize, like, neither one of them actually wrote that. No, of course not. The Biden and Harris staff is fucking dead, and most of them are high as a kite. Yeah. So well, they may as well be, because they just write shite. Um, <clears throat> the fake news media and their Democrat partners in the destruction of our nation pretended to be shocked at my use of the word bloodbath even though they fully understood that I was simply referring to imports allowed by crooked Joe Biden, which are killing the automobile industry, the United Auto Workers, but not their leadership, fully understand what I mean. With the electric car mandate being pushed by Biden, there soon won't be any cars made in the USA unless I'm elected president, in which case the auto manufacturing will thrive again like never before. MAGA 2024. Yeah, I can't do it wrong. <laughs> Let me maintain the Trump thing. For <clears throat> yeah, and it's ridiculous. And I showed you the Rasmussen polling. Trump's up. The only person who even comes close is Big Mike, which is hilarious. I don't think um, faces... Michelle Obama would ever run for president. I don't, well, allegedly she is. Uh, Trump faces having Newark property seized after failing to pay $454 million in fraud case. He's taking it back to court, idiot. He's appealing it. Trump has been ordered to pay $454 million. million. Get the yes. fuck out. He's not going to pay that. I know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, that, that, this is political persecution, okay? That's just, you know, kitchen sink to see what sticks. Exactly. Which is what that Variety, <laughs> or excuse me, Vanity Fair article Vanity was saying yeah. is not what's happening. Yeah, we're not doing it that. It totally uh -huh. is. Sure. 
New York attorney uh, Letitia James is ready to seize property if Trump cannot produce the money. That's quite the turkey, Nick. Yeah. Ms. James has vowed to ensure Trump covers the full fine either through cash or or assets. He's... No, he won't. It's still being litigated. He's taking it back to court. I mean, this is just... I mean, this is ridiculous. This is not how the legal system is supposed to work. People are calling you Aiden Trump. (laughs) 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 Oh, what? Um... Speaking on ABC, she claimed, quote, if he doesn't have the funds to pay off the judgment, then we will seek judgment enforcement mechanisms in the court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. I mean, this is just, it's, it's Bollocks, yeah. Original. A bond of the size would be abused, uh, would be an abuse of the law, contradict bedrock principles of our republic, and fundamentally undermine the rule of non- law in New York. President Trump will continue fighting and beating uh, all of these crooked Joe Biden-directed hoaxes and make America great again, said, uh, that is lawyer, right? Spokesman, Stephen Chung. Trump's ability to cover his growing legal fees is becoming increasingly uncertain. I like how this is what they're saying, that he can't pay for it. That he can't pay it. No, I think he can pay it. It's just illegal. Didn't he get a it's- shitload of money recently because of uh, yeah. the sale of, of Truth Social? Yeah, he made a ton of money. He had like $4 billion. Yeah. But, uh, well, I mean, this is all, again, this is a cope. This is all cope. Oh, the reason he won't pay it is because he doesn't have any money. This is what they're telling their their brain dead audience. No, it's really because we we're we've finally we've we've really bankrupted him this time. Yeah, he's been bankrupt before, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You can't. So that's one vector. Uh, you know they're trying to time up all these court cases. They're trying to keep him off the ballots on, on a bunch of states, as we've seen. Uh, Keith Olbermann went a step further though, trying to fine him five hundred. Half a billion dollars. Keep Oldman as usual, because he's uh, having a normal as usual. I just called for him to be assassinated. <laughs> Far left personality uh, post was smattered with comments suggesting uh, he'd be permanently suspended by Elon Musk's platform uh, because the Biden Harris HQ said Trump says he has been treated worse than Abraham Lincoln, who was assassinated. And Oberman responds, There's always the hope. He is an absolute fucking lunatic, by the way. I mean, like, I don't know if you it's remember. It's actually like, kind of funny. It is. He, he's always been literally frothing at the mouth for eight years. I mean, legit. I, I'm using the word literally accurate, accurately. Not yeah, he's, he's always been kind of a madman. Um, he used to be like, like a respected sportcaster, I, I believe, yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And, and then he ago. decided that um, he's he now going to be to um, an absolute fucking lunatic. He probably always was a lunatic. Yeah, probably. But it is really funny so to see him just Trump like Trump also, speaking of mind. lawsuits, he's going to sue, I think, George Stephanopoulos. Oh, I did see that, yeah. Uh, Trump has has sued ABC host and commentator George Stephanopoulos for defamation because of uh, rape allegations that Stephanopoulos made in a recent... In- Sorry, I'm so, I had to do that rape video. I'm so being like, oh, I can't say that word, but it, we're alive. And- Which is why this stream is funded by viewers like you. Thank you, guys. Uh, Trump filed the lawsuit Monday in federal court in Miami. Stephanopoulos confronted Mace during a March 10th interview on This Week, asking how she, a rape victim when a teenager, could endorse the former president when judges and two separate juries have found him liable for rape. That's not true, though. Here it is. Our next guest is South Carolina. Oh, I don't, this is 10 minutes. You get the idea. She, like, she's like, I'm a victim. Well, I, I, he gets to the thing that she said. Real- candid and courageous testimony about her own experience as a rape victim. Funny how you think it's courageous. Launching her run for Congress in 2019. Sports Trump. From some of us who've been raped, it can take 25 years to get up the courage and talk about being a victim of rape. And the first thing that happens when a woman comes out in public and says she's been raped, what is the first thing out of someone's mouth? Why didn't you do it? It didn't happen. No, the first thing that comes out is proofs. Proof? Yeah. Evidence? This is why women do not come forward. Uh, no, no, it isn't. Evidence. Because I just went through the data on this. At the very lowest end of the estimate, 8% are false. Highest end, 41% being a little bit unheritable, 61%. Excuse me, 60%. I mean, Somewhere between you're... 8 and 60% are false. It's it's okay? it's it's kind of logical that people would ask that because you are accusing someone of a fucking crime, you idiot. Yeah, 
Why is this the only I was thing raped. Like, yes, can you? For? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ex exactly. We we'll just believe all women. Uh, no. Uh -huh. No. Nope. They are afraid. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. And you've endorsed Donald Trump for president. Mm -hmm. uh, judges and two separate juries have found him liable for rape and for defaming the victim of that rape. Uh, but he didn't. They they, they did but, but not find didn't. him guilty of rape. Yes. The... They, they did not find him guilty. Trump was never found liable for rape, according to a member of his legal Miami. Alejandro Alex uh, Rito, law.com reported. Being accused on Stephanopoulos' program of being involved in rape is, in our estimation, a clear defamatory statement. I mean, it is. He was not found guilty of that. Yeah. So you just lied. Rather than acknowledge that Stephanopoulos crossed a line and made a mistake and provide us with a full retraction, all ABC did was change the headline of a print of this story. Yeah. And so, I mean, I hope I hope he sues the pants off George Stephanopoulos. Quite literally. Carol. Yeah. Who is an absolute lunatic. <clears throat> This was weird. Hmm? It was just weird. So this is a weird interaction. Uh, Destiny called Trump demonic on Piers Morgan. <laughs> what the f Wait, yeah. Destiny was on Piers Morgan? Oh, let me get this straight. Benny, Destiny, yeah, Benny and Johnson. Dave. Dude, Dave, Dave yeah. I'm, I'm assuming Dave whooped the shit what? out of them. Uh, yeah, just let's check it out. Isn't this liberals falling into the old trap? of over demonizing Trump to the extent yes. that she just helps him. It does. By yes. The way. I think that there is an issue when it comes to covering Trump because it feels like there is an over demonization of Trump. There but is. So Trump is kind of a demon. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I think that it's funny because people will look at the left and they'll say that, you know, people are well, harping too much on Trump's rhetoric or how mean he is <laughs> on Twitter. Face. But then when you talk to conservatives, it seems like Trump's Twitter behavior is their number one selling point for why they like him so much. Yeah, because it's funny. Yes, because it's funny. It's not demonic. It's funny. Dude, like, Destiny, you're an edgy boy. Like, how do you not get it? You're edgy as fuck. How do you not get that? That's why people like Trump. For the same reason that Did they that like... Did that young Trump's thing that you bang just, like, rob you of all of your testosterone, dude? Like, this is, like, cringe. Don't be rude about that. So much. Like, yeah, I don't know what he does policy. Yeah, why? But, it's nobody's business. You know, he's got a lot of really good I don't care about that. I care about the known... fact that he's no shred of masculinity left. All right. Let's go back to it. Policy, I don't know what he does with legislation. But, you know, he's got a lot of really good zingers. Like, this is a guy who's yes. known for giving mean nicknames to his debate stage. Yeah, how's that to Monarch? Yes, because um, it's funny. I, I don't think it's that crazy to say that Trump has some of the most divisive rhetoric and is one of the meanest people that we've seen as, like, a world leader on the world stage, at least in support. Really? If you think Trump is the mean, meanest? Trump is not mean. Trump is funny. He, he, people give him shit and he gives them back to him. Yes. I, I mean, I, like, I'm sorry, coming up with he, nicknames. The, the, what, what, I just, what, what I just like find what? bizarre about all of this is that Trump Little is Marco? the Trump is probably the most he's the most aggressively demonized politician that I have seen mm -hmm. in my entire lifetime. And then people are surprised that he punches back. It's like you do realize what if he didn't, you would you would all yes, you would all call him like a pussy because he doesn't punch. And then the second that he does punch, like oh why are you why are you attacking him? Because you well, don't you show the fuck up about him. You know what it is? It's like that, that, that thing you know that little kids do where it's like why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Kind of shit, right? <laughs> King barbecue. Right. As far as like rhetoric and how know. he dresses people goes. Yeah, but I always say you see about this that there's a lot of hypocrisy about this based around Trump's rhetoric compared to his actions. For example. You know, with Barack Obama, uh, who obviously didn't tweet incendiary things about people uh, and was the epitome of kind of civilized presidential public office behavior, um, but he still deported over three million this people. Before or after Fast and Furious. A terrible drone program. He still dropped more bombs in one year than any president in modern history. He kept Guantanamo. A rare Piers W, uh, being accurate about that kind of stuff. Yeah, but well done, Piers. Campaigning to shut it, etc. Um, he's he's the angel, Trump's the devil, and I don't think either's particularly accurate. Yeah. Can we be honest sure. for a second? I don't think I would say that Obama is an angel, but I mean, there's a separate discussion between, like, uh, besides the character of a person and the actual policy positions or things they did in office. No, but but we're talking about things they've actually done. You, you, you want to call you're, someone? A, <clears throat> you're talking a about demon their personality, your, is right. what you're talking about now. But you said. I mean, you're not talking about policy. Is, is like a demon. 
or, or Trump, he can understand why, or why yes. people think Trump is demon-like and, because he says mean things on Twitter. And Pierce yes. comes back and says, yeah, well, Obama drone struck American citizens, got American citizens killed, and a bunch of kids for a long time. And, and one of these that. actions is there. demonic and the other is not. I don't, dude, I, this is a, an L. <clears throat> I think Trump was used on both counts, but... I mean, separate from policy or, you know, effectuality or ineffectuality as a leader, I think that it's pretty undeniable that Trump is kind of a mean-spirited guy. And then okay, okay, so stop, stop. Is yeah, Biden not wait. a mean-spirited guy? Have you seen the shit that Biden has said about people? You want to by the way, racial jungles? By, by, by the way, can you just pause for a second? Uh, just look at the Dude, two faces of the and, people and on the yeah. right. <laughs> Dave's like, this motherfucker. And <laughs> fucking I, Benny's like, I, I would shoot this fucker right now. Wait, wait, just wait, wait, wait. Because, hang on. <laughs> You look at how he runs the country. He's a very self-driven person. Like every single Base. thing that he that's does good. is just ultimately to serve his needs or his ends at the end of the day. Yes, that's what you need. Yes. You need someone who's driven we, we by, by yes. self-motivation, by what they want to do, and it cannot be bought by anybody because they have resolve. And money. That's way better to, to vote for someone who has resolve, who has goals, that are self-motivated, who is not able to be bought and paid for by external influences, like the Biden family. Whether that means throwing political opponents under the bus, whether that means throwing political allies under the bus, whether that means not helping, you know, Georgia's uh, Senate elections because he's so angry that Raffensperger, you know, wouldn't turn over enough votes for him. And now Georgia has two blue senators like, I don't know, just Trump is a really mean dude. And again, okay. yeah, you can switch over. You can look at the foreign policy position, too. But I, I mean, you can talk about Obama's folly. God, Destiny, you're such a bitch. Like, why, dude? Turkey. Trump also, why you know, are you saying this? Oh, yeah, my God. Oh, wait, again, look at Benny uh, and Dave's faces. You know, the Jerusalem, moving the embassy over to Jerusalem and the United States' uh, recognition of Israel annexing Israel. <laughs> look at, so, at Dave's face. Yeah, it's like all I'm watching. Any account where he would come off as a nice guy. Okay. I mean, Benny Johnson, does anyone, does it matter? whether Trump's a nice guy or not. I think people have baked in now what he is. He's a shoot from the hip, you know, guy that loves to talk. He's, he's pretty narcissistic. Okay. Uh, he's pretty bombastic. I and mean, these things make him a he's bad leader. In fact, they really make him probably a very good leader comparatively. Deal. He says if somebody punches me metaphorically or real, I'll punch them 10 times back. There's nothing new about any of Trump's behavior if you have studied his behavior for the last 40, 50 years. Yep, exactly. He just happens to be a guy who won the White House. Oh, right Lance, now, geez is actually looking like his favorite to win it back. So for all the rhetorical issues around Trump uh, and the supposed meanness, there are tens of millions of Americans who are queuing up to vote for him. Yeah, so let's talk about tens of millions. I particularly take quite a bit of umbrage with the description of Donald Trump as demonic. Uh, I think that is quite shocking as a Christian myself to call somebody demonic like mm -hmm. Donald Trump, who's actually against the 10 million people who have been human smuggled into this country, many of them children. I remember a time not too long ago when people cared about, the left cared about children in cages. Yet now they're calling Donald Trump demonic. He wants to stop these human smuggling by mm -hmm. the cartels. Have you ever been down to the border, Destiny? Have you seen the rape trees? Have you seen the little children's toys that are left down there from the human- I don't know if I believe that rape tree stuff, by the way. I saw, I mean, I think we covered that. But if that is, if any amount of that is true, it's- And, and obviously the, the human trafficking, the human trafficking of children is 1000% true. Yeah. That, that's unquestionable. Um, by the way- I'm, I'm the weird out about those rape trees. I, like, I just, I- Whenever I hear something that is that catastrophic sounding, my alarm bells go um, off, you know what I mean? Yeah, but the the one thing I am not a fan of when it comes to modern politics is that a lot of it is like this level of animated and there is something deeply disturbing to me how unsophisticated and uncivilized our politics has become that we are regressing to this level of angst and animation in order to sell a pitch. It's like, this is the wear a suit this, this always... and conduct yourself with a sense of masculine decorum and not like you're making a so. fucking TikTok video. This is really um, embarrassing to me on a, just a masculine level. Yeah, I suppose so. I, however, I think it's inevitable because of the, the nature of, of democracy inherently, which creates an us versus them mindset, right? it's a cringe. So, so it produces just this sort of, of just overt doped anger. up. D yes, where it, where it, it like everyone's there, on there are, there are facts and there are facts involved <laughs> in the stuff that's being said. But yeah, it comes with. At least Destiny didn't get emotional about it. Benny is getting. Emotional. 
Mm. But I, I do think he's kind of right to be a little bit um, fired up, at least about the term demonic. Dave is usually the very demonic, the calm one. Yeah. Demonic has pretty significant implications to it. It has a very, I mean, explicit Christian implication to it. So, and I, I find it weird for, for Destiny, who is an atheist, uh, as far as I know, a very staunch atheist, would use the word demonic. Human smuggling that is created by Joe Biden, the biggest human smuggler in human history. Do you know the carnage and the horror that is being created by those policies? <laughs> uh, yeah, he is going a little bit ham. Talk about how what Joe Biden has done on the world stage. Donald Trump brought world peace. You're going to talk about Kurds and wars? How about Ukraine? Joe Biden could have stopped that war before it even started. Joe Biden continues that war and continues the funding of that war that is leading to the wholesale slaughter. Well, we know how we know how Destiny feels about that. We've had him on the show to talk about it. <clears throat> He does not think that, that Biden's involved in it. I staunchly disagree <laughs> with that. As I've been over the evidence, uh, he agreed with it. Agreed. But, uh, oh well. Entire region. Joe Biden could stop it right now. Joe Biden has brought war around the world. And then let's talk about the fentanyl poisoning. That is true, though. I mean, look at all the wars that have started. Or, or that are on the brink of war. All of the issues that have ha happened under Joe Biden's leadership, right? Yeah, Benny's just coming a little bit, coming a little bit too hot, I think. America, you want to talk about cruelty? It took Joe Biden 400 days to go to East Palestine in Ohio, a city that was poisoned by our federal government in a chemical explosion, yep. much less the chemical explosion that is happening all throughout America with fentanyl slaughtering 100,000 Americans. And the final thing I'll say here, how dare you call Donald Trump demonic when Joe Biden hasn't even said Lakin Riley's name correctly, called her Lincoln Riley when he was forced to. This woman yeah. was- If you don't remember, the, like a- <clears throat> Does a woman- Slaughtered by a criminal alien who was mm -hmm. in this country illegally, who was released by Democrats, and went on to slaughter a nursing student in Georgia with his bare hands. And Joe Biden apologized to the murderer. Yep. How dare you say, Joe, B that Donald Trump's dem- I mean, I'm sorry, th there is some level of, of righteous anger that is, uh, fair there. If you're gonna call somebody demonic, I, I think, look, if you're gonna put- if you're gonna use this incredibly charged language, demonic, so that- that is very charged. You're gonna call anybody demonic with a religious implication to it. Maybe it shouldn't- maybe it should be the guy who- who, yeah. Apologize to the illegal immigrant who murdered people. Monic, can you defend any of that behavior? Final thing I'll say here is Joe Biden wouldn't acknowledge his own grandchild. Mm -hmm. Even the New York Times said that is a sick, evil behavior. So if you're looking for demonic behavior, my friend, I got it for you. It's sitting in the White House in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue in a diaper right now <laughs> during nap time. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do like Pierce's response. Wow. Or a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> oh no, guys, what do you think about that in the chat? <laughs> huh? I, I just thought chat. that was. Well, I didn't, I didn't know what people's because I was I had it in full screen, so I couldn't see. Uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty. I thought that was that was uh, yeah, very Nolly. performative on Benny's part, but also that was a terrible, terrible argument. Best. I, you shouldn't use the word demonic and not expect to get that kind of thing back, I guess. Yes. Especially like considering Trump's opposition, for God's sakes. This was also weird, but not unexpected. See? Trump claims every Jewish person who votes Democrat hates their religion and <coughs> Israel. True. Um. I mean, that's just, that's, that's true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> was it in the sexual clip? Yeah, here the evangelicals love just love Israel. I can't imagine anybody voting Democrat, let alone for this per this this man who's who's totally he was shot thirty years ago. He's more shot now. But the problem was all caused by crooked Joe Biden, and uh, you know he's negotiating oh. all of these different. Gene's all low and loose in this. He's not club. really negotiating because he doesn't have time in the day. He spends most of the day sleeping, but he can't. He can't put two sentences together. He can't. Do anything. He can't do anything. We have an incompetent man as our president. Obviously, though, um, with the current uh, stuff in Israel and uh, Palestine, uh, that's going to be, I guess, divisive. Some. But uh, there it is. Just wanted to put it out there. Because to say, 
Jews don't vote. I mean, like, I look, they, they, they are pretty honest about it. They, they, Dems have been going very hard in favor of Palestine. Uh, they, they did all that. Man, they did that weird stuff on Harvard's campus, which we'll get to here in a minute. I got another Harvard story for you today. Because, uh, wow, we, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Democrat leadership has made it very clear that they're uh, in favor of Palestine. So I. I don't know. Uh, if you're Jewish in the United States, uh, I, I would not, if I was Jewish in the United States, I would not vote for the Democrat Party, uh, personally. But, uh, I do find that, I mean, I don't know. There it is. At the same time, AOC says that, uh, if you criticize her, uh, for anything, it's Islamophobic. AOC is not a Muslim. But okay, here's the clip that, that she's calling Islamophobic towards her even though she's a Muslim. Oh, she's a Democrat. They're going to vote for Biden. I'm not surprised about that. I am surprised that in the year of our Lord, 2024, <laughs> there is a public relations agent for Hamas sitting in the United States Congress. The Today. No, she's a Democrat. Hmm? They're going to vote for Biden. I'm not surprised about that. I That's it. You just quote her Hamas agent. I mean, she is. I mean, she, she is pro-Hamas. She's been pretty clear about that. Right? <clears throat> She, of course, said that, how on earth is this kind of blatant Islamophobia so casually accepted without pushback? This is shocking. <laughs> Dr. Lundy says, your identity politics still work. It's not Islamophobic to criticize an Islamic person for pushing Hamas propaganda, but she's... Oh, was he... oh, he wasn't talking about AOC. He was talking about uh, Ilhan Omar. My bad, my bad. My mistake, guys. And she is. She is, though. I'm sorry. Ilhan Omar and AOC have both supported Hamas and Palestine. So, um, Palestine is not... Supporting Palestine is not Hamas, please don't be interested. But, um, yeah, they've made it pretty clear where they draw, draw their line in the sand on that conflict. Uh, of course, Ilhan Omar is also married to her brother? Or is it her cousin? Spoon? It's been fucking, like, dipshit. It's her brother, right? I'm pretty sure. Did he fall asleep? Spoon? Yo. Wake up. Go on. Who is Ilhan Omar married to? Her brother or cousin? This is the brother, isn't it? That's what I thought. Yeah. When did the, when did the cousin uh, get involved? I couldn't remember. The, I knew it was some family. Yeah, it was they're the always, brother. They're always doing that shit. Yeah. <laughs> they're always doing that shit. Uh, but that was AOC who said that it was, it was Islamophobic to criticize Ilhan. Right? Uh, uh, also, AOC's district neighborhood labeled third world as migrants clog streets and prostitutes overrun every block. Ah, what a shit show. I know. Right, the neighborhoods of Corona, Jackson Heights, and Elmhurst, a once vibrant community in northwestern Queens, is now essentially deteriorated into a large flea market with trash overflowing on the street corners, leading to unsavory and unhygienic conditions, as video obtained by Fox Digital shows. Uh, you see, this is why Look only one shit. demographic it's should hold power. Legitimately, dude, this legitimately looks like, uh, I don't know, Bombay or something. Holy shit. You know what's really weird? What? We have this in South Africa, and it's legitimately yeah. more organized than this. I, I was saying, Seriously. Yeah, it looks like, it looks they, like we, India. We, we actually have stalls um, yeah. that are like actually like nicely decorated. It's not just like in the middle of the freaking street. It's AOC's district. Doing a great job, huh? Hope you'd like what you voted for. Vootin. <laughs> oh my god, just piles of clothes. God, it's filthy. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, it, it's a total, it's total third world shit. Uh, and just do you goes see on this? and on. Huh? You see this? See what? What the video? Uh, yes. Yeah. This is the reality. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when non-Europeans have power. Yeah. I mean, in there's no law every and order. There's no law and order. regime in any time and place for like the last four hundred years. If you want a first world civilizations, it is either Asians or Europeans who hold power every single time. 
other races are not fit to hold a regime in fucking place in the first world. That is a fact. You can fucking get pissed off about it all you damn well want. I guess you could say they're but engaging true. in capitalism, but like it's just. But this is. The buying and selling of street. goods is not capitalism. That's no, not like markets. No, just trade. Yes. I said, like I said, I think you could you could maybe make the capitalism argument. I think that people who disagree with us would say like, oh, it's just capitalism. This is a little trash. This is garbage. <clears throat> All the graffiti. It's just a shithole. It's a slum. AOC's district. Meanwhile, she, she's gonna go down to the border and cry. I'm not really at the border, <laughs> pretending that she's at the border. That's what she's more uh, worried about. Virtue signaling on on Twitter about someone being about someone being Islamophobic for being critical of Hamas. Crazy. Take care, of, like you know, you gotta take care of your own household first, right? Get your own shit in order. But no, she has no desire to because they don't care. It's all it's all just theater. Of course it is. It's all theater. You could not give less of a shit about the state of her own neighborhood that she supposedly represents. Again, this looks like a third world country. They were right to say that. At least a couple of people have tables, I guess. You know? But most of it's just people on the ground. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, but, uh, here's the real problem, right? It's uh, free speech. According to Supreme Court Justice Kentaji Brown Jackson. I was going to say, is it a woman by any chance? Jackson? Well, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. You hear that? The how, First Amendment how, is hamstringing the government. I'm how, playing again. In well, my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. How long I pause that? Free speech do, hamstrings the government. I yeah, do kind of not point. want any woman in power ever. Nope. Every single time you feel you see women outside of the home, they are a fucking wrecking ball. They yeah, utterly destroy society. There is a my reason feelings, why feelings. men kept women bare, barefoot and pregnant. It's not because they hated women. It's because they liked everything else outside of the home. Because evidently, outside of that, women are just there to cause hell. Because women, women are because not fit to wield power. This. So they end up seeking. Listen to Queen Victoria. More more power. Yes, exactly. Man, I really exactly. wish we could beat the shit out of them. Yeah, Queen, yes, Queen Vicky had was completely on point on this. Is that? And so was um, Lawrence Nightingale. Oh my you god, Florence Nightingale hated women yeah, so badly. Unbelievably based. But like, look what she all, does. All the, yeah. all the most based women in, in history are just like, women suck. Fuck off. Well, yeah, because if you have any kind of recent analysis, you come to that conclusion. Because you've seen what happens when you give women power. You get some woman like this who says, ah, actually, as a member of, as someone who serves in an arm of the government, free speech, in the Supreme Court of all things, freedom of speech, your First Amendment right, actually hamstrings my ability to control you. Um, I mean, and you're in the core system. you have the government do? I've heard you say a couple times that the government can post its own speech, but in my hypothetical... Yes, you can. Um, you know, kids, this is not safe, don't do it, um, is not going to get it done. And so... so how are you in the core system? Giving systems? advisory. Giving advisory, which is what the government has normally done. Said like, yeah, uh, kids, don't do drugs. That's not enough. Of everybody course, knows this. Drugs, everybody knows this woman is utterly unfit to be in the courts. Like, Obviously, this is insane. How could a, how could a Supreme Court justice legitimately say that freedom of speech is a bad thing because it kneecaps the power of government? This is that, unbelievable. That's, that's, that's the point. Who is going to be on this on SCOTUS for the next sixty years? Fifty. And not if not if black lifespan is in to go by. No, maybe true. So I guess some might say that the government actually has a duty to take steps. To protect the citizens of this country. Which means to restrict free speech. She just said it. She's, she just said it, that the government has a duty to hinder your right to free speech, your First Amendment protected right. The government just, has a duty are, to do that. 
You're just like the embodiment of everything that I don't like about your race as like a caricature. Like, this, this is so not helping your case. I think and then this you, is... No, this her politics no, being a woman. Being... No, I know, but then you compare her with Clarence Thomas and it's like completely two different human beings. Mm-hmm. Of course, perfect perfect case in point. Man, Clarence, Clarence Thomas, Thomas would whoop the woman, shit out of her. But I wish, I wish he beat her like a <laughs> Like an old government mule? <laughs> Actually, I gotta oh, think you, about slavery. You, you, uh, you will not. Okay, uh, the government meal joke you will not get. Yeah, no, I. The chat will know where the where the quote is from. In the government encouraging or even pressuring uh, platforms to take down harm. I meant in Minecraft, by the way, of course. I, I did not. Can't I can't believe saying something like this as a Supreme Court justice. The government needs to have the power to take away freedom of speech. No, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not surprised. I'm disgusted. This this woman is legit is, is an illegitimate judge. Yes, yes. She she had no no qualifications. Trump, uh, if you get if you get back in power, the first thing you should you do can't. is get this woman the fuck out of the court system can't, because she was can't, can't do anything. But... Asia, uh... you help me. I don't know, I'm really, but I'm so really worried about that um, because you got the First Amendment. Take down harmful information. That means information I don't like. You just said it. Take down harmful information. It's information she doesn't like. She's she a tyrant. Say false information. Yes, she doesn't even say false information. She said harmful information, meaning anything I don't. Operating um, in an environment of threatening circumstances from threatening. the government's perspective, and you're saying that the threatening to the government's power, threatening to uh, my political hegemony, means it's not free speech. That's not what free speech is. If, if free speech is only when it is accepted by the government and those in the oligarch in the position of oligarchical power, then it's not free speech, now is it? This is approved of government accepted speech. Sickening. The government can't interact with the source of th those problems. And your honor, I understand that instinct, and I guess what I The source of those problems meaning again she wants to lock me. That's absolutely God damn. Absurd. Yeah, it, it unbelievable. She's an activist. She's not a judge. Yeah, no shit. Mm. You do realize you have it muted. What? I'm not muted. Yeah, you do. There's no sound I'm coming muted? through. What? Hello? I'm not playing it anymore. Oh, there we go. I don't know why. <laughs> Dude, okay. Culture war I stuff was now. I confused. Because I was like... I need to still do a video on that Verge article. Harvard Business School investigation report to recommend firing Francesca Gino. You white man chance? Uh, that is well, that is, that is, that is quite the jawline. Holy shit! That Francesca fucking puts mine to shame. Francesca Gino sounds Italian to me. Of course, yeah. Internal report from Harvard Business School revealed that. So this is comes after Claudine Gay, and then after the Claudine Gay thing, actually there was another thing at Harvard. I have it in my. Where was it? Do I have it here? It happened again, like a like a month. After the Claudine Gay thing, or right during the same time, there were some other people that were uh, under investigation at Harvard for plagiarism, or for some other, or her data falsification or fabrication, I can't recall now. But this is just, again, this is just this week. Or this last, so. Responsible for alleged misconduct and data fraud. And recommend her term. This is the Harvard Crimson. This, is not, this has been a fantastic year for Harvard. I mean, any, any kind of possible... Goodwill, any kind of, of belief in the ivory tower and the <laughs> accolades oh, just been of academia shot to shit. Is, is destroyed. How can anyone Yay. trust academia at this point? It makes me, I mean, like, it, it I've talked about this a lot. I've made my video on, on, on uh, Claudine Gay, and I've also made my video on Eric Stewart a little bit before that, and then the, the deleted um, attack helicopter study. But as, as you guys all know, <clears throat> My primary area of interest, of course, is usually academic topics. Oh, one second. Excuse me. I have a cold, sorry. Like I said. Um, okay. But this has just been a hell of a year for Harvard. A crimson lady has been uh, completely embarrassed. A report, nearly 1,300 page long document detailing the business school process for investigating allegations of research misconduct. And by the way, I will be reading this, of course. 
How do I not? This is just like, it's got my name all over it. And then I'll, I'll pull up those other couple things that happened after the Claudine Gay stuff. Because there were, I think, there was at least one other professor that was either fired or under investigation at Harvard for data manipulation, fraud, or plagiarism. But it happened like right after, right, right when I was finishing the Claudine Gay video, so I didn't have time to work it in. Last year, the university filed to make the investigation report widely available, and the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press and the New York Reporter intervened in the case to request the document be placed on the public record. Gino's legal team, however, opposed making the document public. Hmm, I wonder why. Andrew, Andrew T. Miltenberg, Gino's attorney, hmm, uh, <laughs> wrote in an emailed statement on Thursday that the report was a one-sided, unreliable, and confidential HR document and that its release came without opportunity for my client to dispute the factual allegations through the normal process of litigation and discovery. Weird how they don't care about that when Trump's case, huh? Just pay us money. We don't have to go through the legal process. Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> the Crimson has reached out to HBS for comment. The document was produced by three HBS faculty members and lies at the heart of a $25 million defamation suit filed by Gino against Harvard. Harvard's being sued by all these people. I think gay suing him. Um, I know that Someone else was suing them. They're being sued by basically everybody for investigating their own car. This is what happens. This is what happens. You hire a bunch of DEI losers. They don't do their jobs because they have no idea how to do their jobs because they've never been trained in how to do a job because their only value is, is in their identity. They don't know what to do. They have no idea what their job is even supposed to be. Gina has, or Gina has rejected all of the allegations against research misconduct. Well, HBS Dean Stricken uh, M. Dadar, <laughs> that's crazy, <laughs> revealed a few details uh, from the report in an August 23 email to faculty defending the handling of the allegations. Against you know, the full document pulls back the curtain on how Harvard conducts investigative claims of research conduct. I am fully well aware of how Harvard conducts research misconduct claims because I read every single document about the uh, Claudine Gay investigation and the um, Eric Stewart investigation. Was he, yeah, he was at Harvard. Eric Stewart at Harvard? Was he? Yeah, he was at Harvard, wasn't he? Right. Right. Stewart. Technology. Yeah. Hold on a second. Right? I, I got a troll. I, I got a troll. He was a, it was a deficit. I don't know why I thought it was. There's someone else. Someone else got caught at Harvard just last year. <clears throat> well, I mean, we went over the Roland Fryer story, of course, in my video. He was falsely, um, basically, I mean, he wasn't fired. They couldn't fire him because he had tenure. But they they just they destroyed his lab. I mean, they, they tore down his lab. Essentially, like he couldn't work there anymore. He can't work with graduate students. He can't serve on graduate uh, advisory committee. And um, they put him on two years unpaid leave. That for flirting with a grad student, by the way. Meanwhile, data fraud, data manipulation. That's fine. Keep doing that shit. Plagiarism. What that's is flirtation fine. nowadays? Nowadays, flirtation is being fucking nice to someone. It was, she was. I saw the, the text, right? It, she was like, she was like, oh, I'm at this conference. I'm getting a little tipsy. I wish you were here, Dr. Fryer. You know, oh, it was insane that's, stuff. And that's like yeah. guy on. And he said that like, well, yeah. And then like, to be fair, he was married and had a child. And he did say something that like, uh, he'd need a bigger, bigger bed if they were together or something. But yeah, they were clearly flirting. But it, I looked through the data, through all of the text messages. And it wasn't even like, it wasn't even grotesque or, um, <clears throat> lascivious in any way he wasn't like talking about all the things he's gonna do to her or something like that it was very mild flirting and yes you know, oh power and balance he's her professor yeah okay but did he fuck her no did they have sex no did they even go out no as far as we can tell he they just flirted via text again oh I mean, you have to take over for a second here um, because I'm losing my voice a little bit. So I'm a break because of cold. Uh, is it data? Is, which one? Hang Where? on. All right. I mean, this is my shit, but go ahead. Oh, go on. Here, the, the internal report reviewed revealed. Oh, we'll talk about the 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 black woman at the um, game company. So that'll give me time to rest my. Voice a little bit. The internal report report revealed that around the same time. In October of 2021, the school received an anonymous complaint against Gino, also alleging misconduct. Three days later, Dater, invent Dater initiated an official inquiry into the allegation. Sorry. Again, hard to me. I'll get better. The inquiry concluded that the allegations warranted a full investigation, which launched an 11-month process in which three members of HPS faculty 
Hang on. Conducted transcribed interviews with Gina and witnesses, a forensic analysis by an external firm that specializes in research misconduct evaluations and a review of Gina's electronic file. In its March 2023 report to DATAR, the committee wrote that Gino had two main defenses against the allegation. The first, the report read, was honest error, luckily by her research assistants. Every time! Every time! It wasn't me, it was my RAs. However, the report concluded that Gina did not provide any evidence of RA error, and we find that we find persuasive explaining major anomalies and discrepancies. I'll go through this all, guys. You know that I will. I'm way too autistic to not. I'll go through and read the whole goddamn thing, and I'll break it down. Uh, the report says that Gino asserted that an unknown actor with malicious intentions was a more plausible explanation than honest errors or intentional data falsification. So what? Someone hacked into your, your report? What? Into your computer and fucked with your data? How absolutely insane. While the professor's name was redacted from the public copy of the report, the person was identified as a female co-author on a 2012 study published in the Proceedings to the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, that article has since been retracted and is among the four papers which Gino has been of data fraud. The report indicated, though, that the committee determined that although the professor may have had negative feelings towards Gino and the ability to manipulate the data, yeah, because you're a whistleblower and it, it's fucking annoying to us, to the rest of us, to those of us who actually do work and care about truth and scientific integrity. This is disgusting to us. It makes us sick. That's why we... Oh, yeah, why we would have negative feelings towards you. I wonder why. Because you manipulated data, and the rest of us care. Some of us do, at least. I do. Oh my this God. person reported her clearly did. What, me getting fired up? No. <laughs> what? There's a, there's a guy that I follow on Twitter, and he just said something very, very... Are you just browsing Twitter over on stream? Yes. I was trying to find a, a thing. Are you just bored by this topic? No, it's because someone was... I was trolling Andrew. The committee did not find the malicious actor. I was trying to find plausible. something. No shit. It's insane. I got distracted. <clears throat> because in their view, Gino failed to provide sufficient evidence to prove it. So like I told you, provide none. The committee also recommended that Datar immediately place Gino on unpaid leave. How and dare you hop? No, I don't. From the university. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you, you placed Dr. Fryer on paid leave for over some mild flirting. In June, three months after the committee concluded its investigation, uh, Data Colada released its series of blog posts about Gino. At the same time, she was barred from campus and stripped of her endowed faculty title base. But she's still works there. Uh, they think they're still paying her, right? <clears throat> Harvard's Office of the President notified Gino, which would be Claudine Gay, notified Gino in late July that her tenure was under review for revocation. That's big. If she is stripped of her, which Gay should be stripped of the tenure as well, but. Sorry. Jeez, my voice is fucking... Be an unprecedented move by Harvard. Yes, it would be. There are no known cases of the university revoking a professor. Um, We'll get more into this. I'm going to have to switch topics because I can't keep talking for longer for now. I, I need to let my voice rest here for a second. So, Spoon. What? I, I, I did forget that. I do need to make a um, watch together here real quick. And this is a good time because I, I need to... Let's I'm going to take a... Too. I took an allergy pill. The that black woman who made the video game sucks. Oh, the the, the one who you spoke with, Subaru Inc. Uh, no, the other one. The other one. Yeah, you made a video better. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. She doesn't work for SBI, does she? Yeah, she used to. Did she? Used to? Yeah, she's a former um, employee of them. The the uh, Black Panther writer. Okay, yeah. I gotta take a <clears throat> break because I, I can't <laughs> keep talking. All right. Oh, count the incompetence. All right, hand off for I'm gonna hand it off for you for a minute to to whinge about this. Uh, I'm gonna go get try to get an allergy pill. That okay. might help. Nothing. Okay. One second. Be right back. Go ahead and start. Ow. Okay. This woman is a terrible, incompetent moron. Yeah, screw it.
From a young age, Danny has always... You are wearing far too much European clothing, sir. Anyone with pronouns... Okay, this is my rule of thumb. If I see pronouns in your bio, I immediately assume you're a cultist and there's nothing worthy mm. of you saying anything. There's only yeah, like... The things that she says are just insane. Three minutes like, in. I'm not, there's no way I like about with all of this. Because there's only okay. two things in this entire video that's worth a shit. And that's when she talks about the team and like the white centric thing. The rest of it is just mind numbing shite. Okay. Yeah. You know the. I do that. Yeah, I know the thing somewhat. Um, only because I saw um, Harmful Opinions talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I watched this from. Yeah, like 310. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then to kind of expand, making a game is a lot of yeah, work. Yeah, I have a minute. <laughs> but um, honestly, looking back at it, I wish I kind of knew how to do this cool. before I actually I, I, went I, I into went, it. I because... did pretty well for a couple hours. <laughs> Which? Being able to talk, despite having a cold. Oh. There is not a lot of guys. You do realize the video's on, yes? No, it's not for me. Okay, well, how is it not? I can see you there. Okay, now now it is. Okay. All right. I know how yeah, to weirdo. get started with your game. And the guys that do exist are very white centric. And I'm like, uh, what the fuck does that even mean? <sighs> it means that white people, white men, the vast majority of people who play video games. I'm going to say that because I'm not afraid anymore. It is very much, you need to know someone in the industry. You need to be able to talk to people in the industry. And you need to be able to... You need to be able to make sure your microphone isn't fucking peaking because Jesus Christ, it's ear rape. Why does like every this? woman have these this bull? I don't get it. Like every I, I keep seeing it everywhere. So many women have this uh, bull ring in the nose. I don't get it. Because they need to be know. led like fucking cattle. I mean, that's that's what it gives off to me, but... Mm -mm. <laughs> we was Kang's vibe, yeah. Understand <laughs> um, how the industry works, how who will favor you, etc. Uh, the people who think your product might be profitable, but you should yeah, be the exactly. ones that favor you, you dumbass. I am clearly not a white person. I that's why your products are shit. I'm but clearly are you sure not a white woman, man. Hang on, are you sure this is the woman though who worked with SBI? Did she work with them? Yes. Because well? she's the one who made. The, but she's the one who made that uh, that dating simulator, right? That was her Same game. Same woman. Okay, okay, okay. I'm a black non-binary woman. How are you non-binary and a woman? Oh, that's true. Good question. But again, all that matters for her doesn't matter what she's making. Doesn't matter her qualifications. Doesn't matter the end product. All that it's matters. It's like me saying, "Hi, I'm a straight homosexual." Okay. <laughs> right. Mm. Um, so it, it's that, I'll tell you what that is, though, real quick. That not binary thing. That's I'm like a heterosexual homosexual. <laughs> no, that's just I'm gonna put a label on myself to make myself more oppressed. Yeah. So that I, I'm more special. That's it. Yeah. That's all that is. Difficult for me because a lot of people did not take me seriously when I first. Jeez, I wonder why. I wonder why I they think could possibly now. look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Which I think is kind of crazy comeback. because... Um, you, you, you think that's crazy? If mm -hmm. someone came up to you and just said, Hi, I'm a non-binary so woman, take me seriously, I would instantly look at it and go, You're a mental head case, why are you here? Fuck off. Yeah. First of all, this is a library. Stop trying to order chicken fries. You fucking weirdo. Hey, this weirdo, is fuck library. <laughs> this is library. He's like, look at her face. Like, oh, there's, there's fuck all tell. going on upstairs. She's like, also got absolutely some Absolutely nothing. She's got them crazy some Paco eyes, man. I'm making yeah, a game just like everyone else, so why wouldn't you take me seriously? Because you're not a serious because person. Because you're a retard. You're not a serious person, so why would I take you seriously? And like, am I, is it because I'm black? I mean, it probably is, but like... No. Uh, no, it's, it's not no, because it's you're because, black. Because you're not serious. It's because you're an idiot and you're boring. Yeah. To quote as yes. you're really you are fucking really boring. boring. And also, there's the. <laughs> I said this in my video. It's because you're a drone. You yeah, don't exactly. have any independent thoughts. You're like, I'm just gonna be this like variations of weird shit that hovers under the umbrella of leftism. That's it. You are a collective identity. 
There is nothing about you that is in any way individualistic whatsoever. You are a fucking script. I yep. literally look at you and all I see is code. I don't even see a human being. Yeah, exactly. Like I just see like a piece of apparatus that moves with the machinery, and I, like, you know, with, with the, the fucking Matt Walsh thing, like, what is a woman? At this okay. point in time, I'm gonna ask, what point is a human being? Because a human being has sentience and a capacity for self-reflection. These creatures do script. not have yeah. this. They just operate script. as as just like magnets and like iron filings being pulled by power. There is nothing in these people that operate like normal human beings would they're like fucking programmed she doesn't cultists. have a single independent thought in her head no it's just, none none whatsoever just that she's been told to repeat it's a fuck, it's a drone and yes i can see the matrix like i just see ones and zeros <laughs> like her hair is basically fucking binary code in my eyes <laughs> like you know you know what i mean like it's just, it kind of sucks mm. That like it kind of sucks that. Ah, oh, woman, you you. Are you okay, grandma. Spoon? You keep pausing like every second. I can't even can't even play it without you just groaning. I hate people who speak in this manner. Like uh, like 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 Spoon. Like, what do you have a problem with? Like, with how like she speaks? Like, you know what I mean? Like. Learn to uh, English, people bitch. People saw me and they're just like. Oh. Whatever, we're not gonna take her seriously. But if someone no made, if a white man may validate, it would be fucking everywhere. That game. No, no, no. Okay, guys. No, it's it's, we'll, it's we'll true because we objectively make better things. After this, I will bring up validate for you guys, so you can see the game that she made that she can't understand why people aren't interested. <clears throat> and I can tell you this, lady. If a white guy made this game, no one would be interested in it. The only reason it got any interest is because you are a black non-binary woman. That is the only reason why and then it, it just it's any it, attention whatsoever. Yes, and, and it's just because it's part of the cringe fringe. Yes. It would be everywhere. <laughs> um, no and way. honestly, what? I hope that I can put my own game everywhere um, as a black woman. I hope that I get that power one day. That's an interesting phrase. I, I hope I, I have want that, that power. power. Yep. Yes. I want power. It's because like the reality is you are a mediocre netwit of a human with fuck all marketing. That is the reality. You are an unimpressive human specimen and you're just subpar. That is the reality. You can screech about it all you want, but just from a human stock value, your value is low. You don't produce anything of quality. You have nothing of interest to say. You are just, you're just not a human being worth paying attention to. That is just the reality. And you can I mean, this game wear all the fucking labels she, that you want. But at the end of the day, be, no one's going to pay right. attention to you. This is it. The game that she's saying would be everywhere. It's, it's a dating sim with a bunch of hideous characters. And we'll look at it after this. Because it's, it's like, no, no one would it's, want it's, this. It's, it's just, the it's, California it looks, thing that V says with the mental even, illness haircut. It's even more than California. -nya. It's like, this is the most extreme California shit I've ever fucking seen. This doesn't appeal to anyone. This appeals to you and your five weirdo friends on Tumblr. Not it doesn't to even appeal to them. They hate insane. this shit. Probably. Because it's probably not inclusive enough or the, something. The, you know? the, the thing of it is, they, these types of people... They always eat them around. Yeah, they actually want to create something that is anti-Europe, but is still good. And that's just not reality. Mm. Yeah. Because we, they live in the shadow of our greatness. That is like what objectively. What they have to do to match a fraction of our power. <laughs> yeah, but like you, you can joke about it, but like the, the reality yeah. is, is that um, they live in a world that isn't made for them. Like they, they actively look at you, and there's a part of them that hates themselves because they will never be as good as us. Like that is actually mm -hmm. why they're like this. They hate the world mm -hmm. because they suck, and they can't mm. cope with the fact that there's nothing they could ever do that will ever match our greatness. That is just the reality. And it's... I they, mean, it certainly comes off as being deeply, deeply resentful. Insecure, uh, yes. And insecure. Yes. And envious. Massively, like, these people are powered by an envy... By the way. Uh, ...that they will never uh, be able to... Chet, uh, bets. Put, place your bets. Does she have a white boyfriend? No. 
I think she wants one. <laughs> of course she wants. Like these, I said this in a previous video. Just a these guess. people, these people all scream about white supremacy being a problem, but white supremacy behind closed doors is laying fucking pipe. Because <laughs> every one of these people are so thirsty for white dick. Why? Because we're top of the hierarchy and they want power. And the, the closest they can get to power is a white dude. Every single fucking one of them. It is a, it is a power game. Like, mm -hmm. stop with your fucking politics. Your politics doesn't mean shit. In reality, women want power. And white people are the ones with the fucking power because we're the better people. We are objectively better human beings. We have a higher IQ. We produce better societies. We're more moral. And we produce just objectively better art and quality of production. That is just a mm -hmm. fucking fact. And you can whine about it all you damn well want. But... Mm -hmm. Previous Thank previous you. regimes. Oh. By the way, Thank you, no, but by the way, every every, <laughs> every every regime and, and part of the world has had this. Like you've had empires in um, in the Arab world, you've had it in Europe, you've had it in Asia. The only place that hasn't had it is Africa. But every other part of the world, they've had the great empires that expanded knowledge. They're the only group that hasn't, and they fucking hate it. That's an ugly reality of human history. People mm -hmm. get really upset about it because they're cool with politics and offend. Like, I don't give a fuck about your feckin' politics. It's just the reality. Look at the world like an anthropologist, not like a feckin' political commentator because you're going to suck and get stuck in really yeah, shallow, narrow-minded gaps. Yes. And I don't give a shit about that. Like, I'm looking at, like, what, <clears throat> what, what kind of society can I cultivate to make sure that uh, we kick everyone's ass? <laughs> Imperialism. Uh... <laughs> But anyways, let's think about making our first game. I like this process called the CTFE, which- I'd like a game where I can play as a conqueror who colonizes lands. There, it, she does say some more insane stuff after the title. The Age of Empires. <laughs> I don't know when she starts getting back into the crazy stuff. This is like her- She it's does when by she the way. The the, she, she talks to her team, and that's like this. By the way, she, she but no, she she says absolutely fuck all. Yeah, there's something that was crazy in this later though. See? It's out there, like millions. <laughs> there are so many games out there. It does sound yeah. highly reductive, uh, mad. But then again, listen to what these people say. There's not a lot of depth to them. <laughs> Africa had termite hills. <laughs> oh god, yeah, that is depressing. That the the termite hills are bigger than the buildings. I think some of them work. I could be wrong about <clears> that. Let me <laughs> replay the video. <clears throat> Yet, there are still unique concepts that have not been touched on. There are still unique concepts that do you know have that? been touched on, but they can be done better. When I started I'm developing games, simulator. I started playing games way differently. I started seeing games that I absolutely love. I love these games, but I saw the littlest things that could be improved of to make this game more enjoyable for me. Example. Oh my uh, god, this is insane. For, for yeah, part, you. Right. Yeah, for for only because they only care about themselves. They're all so for self you. And it, and let's see what you say about this because I remember, yeah, I remember games are made for Apple. mass marketing, not what you yeah. second of all. Yeah. She's what she wants. Um, a game I recently just played was Paper Mario: <laughs> The Origami King. I love that game. Shout out to Nintendo. The Paper Mario series. God tier, love it. But the battle system made me want to jump off a of roof. She doesn't. So she's gonna say she likes Paper Mario, but she doesn't like the fact that you have to actually play it. That there's. I'm serious. That's what she's gonna say, guys. She doesn't like the fact that there's gameplay in a video game. I hated it. I hated that you had to like do little puzzles and stuff like that. Like puzzles. But the like storytelling, the music, the care. Then read a book or watch a movie. <clears throat> You're playing a video game for gameplay. It was so great. And as a game developer, the one thing I would change... I think this is the point that uh, Harmful snapped and just said, make a fucking yeah. movie. Yeah, exactly. Then make a movie. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't want a did. game. You, you want a movie. <laughs> visual novel, yeah. Yeah, so she made a visual novel, which is barely a game. Look, look, okay, I, I'll, I will say all the time, one of my favorite video game series of all time, is Gakuten Saiban, Ace Attorney. I love Ace Attorney. I would say, to be honest, I that it, it describing Ace Attorney as a video game, uh, I'm not sure if it is. There's not and really a fail state, because, like, so, if we go into, like, all the definitions of what makes something a game, I mean, you can fail, but then you just, I guess you just restart what you do in any game. Like, you can fail, you do have kind of a health bar in 
but it's a visual novel and you are solving puzzles but even i would say as, as again my one of my favorite if, if favorite game series of all time ace attorney is barely a video game it, it's a story with interactive elements where you have to solve little puzzles um uh, what you want lady is yeah it, it is is a book is a movie you, you don't want to play video games you're just saying the part that oh, i love oh man i love games if only there weren't all that annoying gameplay in them <laughs> is the battle system to make it more enjoyable it would literally be the perfect game if it didn't have that battle system if you want to make a game like the wolf among us all right so fairy tales pretty simple everyone knows the classic wolf among us is again good game i struggle to call it a game i struggle to call it a game it's, a, it's an interactive story fairy tales but what made the wolf among us kind of i just realized something <laughs> Mm-hmm. These people basically want a pop-up storybook. Yeah, like that is legitimately Ace Attorney what is you a want. girl game. Uh, unironically, the person who introduced <clears> me to Ace Attorney <throat> is my attorney, my my current day attorney, <laughs> who went after many years after I met him, went and got his uh his law degree and is a, a practicing a uh, practicing attorney. Yeah, he is still my legal advisor to this day, and he, so uh, uh, yeah. So I was introduced to Ace Attorney by a, by a guy who is now an attorney. <laughs> it's not Nick Ricada, by the way. <laughs> Different from the classic fairy tales was the fact that it was a game about like murder mystery. It was a murder mystery game. Like you played as Bigby Wolf, and he was a detective. He was discovering murders and all these secrets to like your town. Like that makes People it know, unique. If you want to make a fairy tale game, you can make it cyberpunk. Um, imagine Snow White she's, with, she's so, um, cyber- Dude, like, she has so few ideas. She's like, yeah, just, I, well, fairy tales, or cyberpunk, or Snow White, okay? And your only idea is You're that it's a to have story. Brains. And it's, it's only, an, your only idea is that there's a story, and there's no gameplay. What? Then you don't like video games. Get out. Cyberpunk gear, uh, she has a visor on and everything. Like, you can do that. That has not been done before. Who cares? Think about your game. And if you think it's too similar to another game, change it. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can make any game you put your mind to. My next concept. Is- w- w- would you really listen to this woman for fucking anything? This is, I think, when she talks about the team. When she talks about how she won't hire white people. Yeah. I- I'm okay with that, actually. Is team. Who is your team? A little background about this. I have a team of 21 right now. She made a visual novel that takes how many people, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I've never made a video game, but if I was going to guess how many people it takes to make a visual novel, you need to hire an artist to make, I don't know, like 20, tw- 25 sprites for each character, <clears throat> depending. Do some backgrounds. That's it. And then you have a writer. Then you have a, a basic programming stuff. I'd say tops for a, I mean, I, I've never done it, but just my guess on how many people it takes to make a visual novel, five people. She's got 21 people working on a visual novel. Uh, that's ludicrous. But you're going to find out why she has them. so many people. She, one, she doesn't pay them. And two, she just, it, from my, I think she just hired her friend. Uh, uh, for validity, it's a pretty big team. It's a crazy big team for indie games. But yeah, which, who is your team? Validate it has a to be team of mostly people, mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted to create a safe room. That is against the law. Who cares? That's illegal. And she just admitted to it. I know, she, obviously no one cares. But you're not allowed to do that. You can't, you can't hire based only on race. I mean, they do it all the time. But definitely that's against the law. Environment. And I know the best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Uh, wow. Statistically just speaking, made the argument that's, that's, that's not true. Legitimately just said. She legitimately just said she is all, she wants to and is in favor of segregation. She doesn't want to be around white people. So, I don't know, as a South African spoon, how do you feel about that? Based. <laughs> why do I want um, to be around? And I'm not saying- what, serious question, why do I want to be around this? Yeah. Good question. What, what, what do I lose by not being around this? Like, seriously. You want you want to create really shitty art using only people of your kin. 
And she doesn't want to be around what? you. She doesn't want you to buy her game. So then um seems like real it's a win win. Again, right? what 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 do what do I lose by being segregated from this? Right. It's not a threat. Right. That's a fucking promise. She hates us. She's pretty open. She hates people like us. I'm okay with that. Evil. So uh why why would why if only their opinion fucking game? mattered. So why should anyone buy your stupid little game? And then you complain about how you don't get money. Gee, I wonder why. I don't want I don't want you to buy my game. Okay. You do when it's not even a cringe fringe wants to play your shit. Like that's just the reality. Yeah. So they'll have problems with it because it's not inclusive enough, because you made some minor mistake. You misgendered somebody or something. That white people in the industry are creating safe unsafe environments. I'm not saying that. Yes, you are. That is actually what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> Literally what you said. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying that sometimes it is hard to work with white people because they think that something made it okay, but it was really a microaggression. And oh my god. Could you imagine yeah, I, trying, having being forced to work with this woman? Oh my god. Just like you, you, everything is a microaggression. You see, you see now, the point that I made, because if I hear this kind of shit, I just have to laugh at it. Because... Mm -hmm. Does that mean if I don't hire you, I'm technically a black ally? Hmm. Because I'm not exposing you Here's to my toxic whiteness? There you go. Yeah, no one should hire, no white people should ever hire her because um, she doesn't want to be exposed to your toxic whiteness. Yeah. Right, and and, and if, if I make it by law, I'm forbidden to go near you. Right, there you go. Like seems, the law like is actually protecting you from yeah, my from horrible whiteness. Through segregation. Though. Segregation is pro-black. You heard it here first, people. Yeah, from this black lady. Yeah, <laughs> she is. No one wants to deal with that while you're trying to make a game that they love. So, who is your team? What does you See, these people just make the case that segregation actually is a benefit. Know, Woodrow crazy. Wilson was it's correct. Crazy. It's crazy that they just come out and say shit like this. Your team represent. Is your team all men? What does that represent about your game? If it means it's going to be of quality. What is it representing that's, that's what it means. You just like I hate white people and men. <laughs> okay, I mean like like it's funny that she's doesn't doesn't see how it goes. I feel like the segregation part is gonna get clipped in the stream. Probably, but whatever. <laughs> You're making a game about teenage girls. Why is your team all men? Because um, teenage girls don't know how to produce a fucking game. You stupid bitch. <laughs> what, what's the what's the best what's the best TV show about teenage girls of all time? <laughs> It's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, made by weirdo freak Joss Whedon. Just saying. That's, let's that's let's not think really about that a little. Though. What is the goal? Doesn't matter. It's true though. Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> is like the best show about teenage girls ever, made by like Joss Whedon, who is a weirdo, but still, and and did apparently some really creepy, gross stuff for dealing with um. One woman. He like made he called her fat and stuff when she got pregnant. It's really weird. Goal for you and your team, and really what? Actress. He caught someone fat and they got pregnant. That's some pretty powerful sperm they got there. No, he was he was like he was just talking. No, she gained a little bit of weight because she was pregnant. Uh, the uh, oh. can't her name. Uh, and he he talked okay. shit and basically you, cut her out of the fucking show. Okay, you should have said that because you 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 just said he sp like he called her fat and then she got pregnant. That's what I'm no, like. No, 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 what? no. She, I was very he, confused. Like, what she, the she, fuck? she, okay, so she was a. Oh, sorry, what's Cordelia's actress? <laughs> what? The fuck? what? Char yeah, ma charisma. What? Charisma. Okay, that that makes more sense. I just thought, like, what the hell? How did you go from fat yeah, to pregnant? It is pregnant? charisma. I was confused. Uh, charisma Carpenter. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, yeah, charisma Carpenter got pregnant, and uh, yeah, Joss Whedon like also because she was Christian. And he didn't like that, and so he just treated her like shit apparently the whole time. And I don't know, did weird Who's stuff with her character. Who's the fucking Undertaker in that picture? Is there a bad picture? I don't know. She was beautiful back in the day. Um, just and it just seems like Joss was terrible to her. But anywho, there's a show written by a, and made by a white dude about teenage girls. So, uh, and I love Buffy, even though yeah, Joss is a fucking weirdo. Do you want to achieve? How will you guys get to the finish line together? Okay. How will you divide up the work? How we divide up the money. This isn't even game. This is just like a basic business philosophy. Yeah, well, she's, like, should, she's complaining about how she's like in a hurry to make money. You have yes. to make a pitch. In order to make a good yes. pitch, somebody has to want to buy it. And then she's like, no one wants to, well, wow, no one's going to want to buy my game, apparently, because I didn't make it I for anybody why. but me. I made it for me. Yeah, well, you are one person. Unless you're going to fund it, then no one wants to pay for it. 
those are things you have to think about, especially if the bigger your people. team gets, the more you need to think about that a little more intensely. Yeah. And then how will you and your team work together towards this goal? I think that is really important because when I was creating Validate, I did not have that in my mind. I was just like, all right, we're going to get this game done. So she had no plan at all. We're going to figure it out. As we I go. just like never had a plan. We wow. didn't actually start having a plan until probably like March of this year. Wow. Um, we do things by phases. So um, our first process is writers and editors. Our second process is um, uh, art. And then like programming, music, it kind of just blends all together. Programming and music. Programming is the last thought. Okay. With that. Um, so we don't have to like wait until the end to program everything in. Um, so that's our process. That's what works for us. But for other games, it might be different. You might have to program the entire game first before you even write a single thing. You might have to do all the art so you can figure out how you are going to program this game. The possibilities are endless. My favorite one, funding. Of course. Funding is thing? really hard to come by, especially as a marginalized developer. Oh my especially God. Maybe it's because your game as a just black sucks. developer. Especially no, it's because your idea sucks. Maybe it's because your concepts are shit and they're not yeah. bankable. It sucks. Why. People difficult. will happily throw money at you if they thought that there's a good investment. Sure, that's that's exactly. kind of how that works. People want to make money. Yep, money. And yes. it's yes, they want to make money. Money. And you, as a black woman of non-binary descent, whatever the fuck that means, whatever, yeah. <laughs> it's it screams, "I'm a political drone, and I'm here to set money on fire." Yeah, what you did. It doesn't mean you did. you're going to make anything. Yeah, let's get to the money like part. Your, I your, your, your politics, it. your politics are so toxic, it can turn a Jew into a world-class fucking sprinter to get the fuck away from you. Yeah. Because it's just absolute fucking As rich. a woman. Um, as a woman. As a woman. And the thing woman. is no. that you have to ask yourself is, games cost money. How wow. and where am what I going to get this money from? Juden. Thanks, maybe? Will you fund your game with Kickstarter, a publisher, grants? Or a gentleman by the name of Mr. Fink. Or yeah, you could get a loan. If you really care, you could get a loan. And also, what is the long-term goal with the funding you have? To make the game, you fucking yeah. moron? That's, uh, is, is that the point of getting money? That was a question money? that I yeah. really, and I like wish I had a time machine so I can go back in time to um, when we were playing our Kickstarter because I severely underfunded us. Um, and that technically Because wasn't you hired 21 people. My fault. Oh, of course, nothing's ever your fault. Now, is it, sweetheart? Nothing ever has ever been your fault. Because I didn't really have any experience and I didn't have anyone telling me, you guys are lowballing yourself. You need to raise your goals so you can get more. Don't hire 21 people. To work on a fucking dating sim. Money for you and your team. $16,000 for like 21 people is not enough money to no fund, fully fund the game. Can you believe that? You you needed to have expertise to fucking you know that? Yeah, I could have told you that just from the math. Yeah, just basic math. You need an expert to tell you that $16,000 isn't enough to hire 21 people to work on a video game? What an idiot. Um, that was our base. We end up hitting, I think about 46,000 and then we kicked That's our still not even close. So really like $40,000 because they take like $6,000. Fun fact. A lot of people don't know that. Um, if you are 20 people, I would say you need at least half a million. I mean, you're going to need... For 21 people? I'm get, I'm guessing a lot of them were just small-time contractors, but and the way she's made it sound is that like, they were full-time employees. Which is not saying anything bad about Kickstarter. Shout out to them. We became a project you love in like the first like 12 hours of our game, and I was like, oh my god. Considering her game, I'd like to know what the fuck you know that she need 20 people for. Uh, not, uh, she's paying her friends. That's what's happening. But I digress. I really wish that someone told us that $16,000 is not enough. Because now know. that I'm thinking back about math. it, we all, like, our entire team got paid. And, like, the rest of our funds went towards legal fees. And money runs out. Like, people act oh, like $46,000 is enough to fund a, a whole game. It's not. No one's ever acted like that. really not. You made that up in your head. Games are expensive as hell. Yeah. Games are so expensive. People keep on lying and saying that, like, oh, you only... If it was you and, like, two other people making it, 
making it, which is all it really takes to make a, a, a game like this. You need a, a, someone to do the coding. You need someone to do the art. You can do the writing, script development, whatever. Three, three to four people. Yeah, then forty thousand dollars. Everyone gets paid. You know, ten grand. I mean, it, it's an investment, but you're hoping to make more money out of it once the game goes out, right? And then you Hopefully, can sell it. Yes. Then that okay, that's an investment, but you're hoping then 10, 10 grand per person or about that. All right, cool. That that's reasonable. Twenty people? No. Nah. What an idiot. No one told us. I don't know. Like again, do you have no concept of basic mathematics? Unbelievable. Games are so hard. They have so no, you screwed up. <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty thousand dollars game. No, you don't. You need way more. Because that money is going towards yeah, not what the just legal fees are about, by the paying way. your team. Legal Copyright fees. Stuff, probably. Engines. Um, copyright, etc. Buying a Unity license is like a thousand dollars for a person. It's a lot of money. Um, and a lot of people just like don't really understand. I shouldn't say people, I should say publishers. A lot of publishers don't understand that visual novels cost a lot of money images here, guys. because our big focus is, is art. This is a game that costs $40,000. With a team of 21 people working on it. So just you wait. I know you've paused it because you're, you're disgusting. But just wait. Just look at that thing. Our, our budget is like our biggest budget on the team. Um, and art me meaning UI, sprites, CGs, end cards, other art assets, marketing. It's everything. Like it, it costs a lot of money to make a visual novel. Um, and I really hope that me making this game and giving this talk shows y'all that this stuff is nothing to play with. That's it. I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm, I'm infuriated by this. Uh, it's just, just the sheer incompetence of it all. Yeah, it's infuriating to me. I want to just look at the game, shall we? Because I, I, I saw your response here. Let's look at it, shall we? Let's hear. <sighs> Oh God, I I regret this already. So this is uh, validate struggling singles in your area, set in the Jersey City area. Which one of this is Yeah, which, let's see if we can determine which one's her. Is a visual novel about thirteen struggling singles navigating the harsh realities of love and life, running the gamut from independent living, financial difficulties, and raising children on their own. Our cast of twenty-something millennials. Learn that growth does not end when a person comes of age and is only a precursor to quarter-life crisis. Shenanigans ensue. <clears throat> Play as Malik, Inaya, Isabel, and Emery in Volume 1 of Validate as they enter the Jersey City's unprecedented, uh, unpredictable dating scene. Their stories are told through over 30 routes and hours of gameplay based on your good or bad choices. Enable their awful behavior and leave a trail of broken hearts behind them or help them along a path of self-betterment with mixtapes, poetry, and cosplay thrown into the mix. Shall we see our cast of characters? <laughs> An HR specialist. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. She, he. From Qatar and Spoon. Guess what? That thing is not from my country. That's is Qatari and South no. African. Bitches love drama in the workplace until it involves them. That, 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 that is true, though. That, that part is true, though. True, that's true. Lesbians born after 1994 can, can't cook. All they do is eat ramen, buy seven wedding rings, eat hot chip, and cry. I mean, that's true as well. Yeah. Malik Paterson, a manager at Popeyes, which I think that seems kind of racist. <laughs> He's a 26 Ghanaian he him. Men stay in touch with girls they should never cheat it on and get mad when they follow a restraining order. Crash ass mis mixtape. Kill your producer. What? I don't know. Look at that arm hair. Look, as somebody who who was unfortunately cursed with a lot of arm hair, just <laughs> it's not it does not look like that. I'll just put it that way. Not what it looks like. It looks like, like Ron Jeremy in a fucking so, wig. So, yeah, why, why do they make it look so gross? Like, if you just have normal amounts of, like, body hair, this doesn't, on your arms or whatever, it doesn't look like that. What the fuck? It looks like it's been shaved and then grown back. It's so gross. Um, Anaya Saifi, a food scientist, which is to say a chef from Pakistan, 
She, they. So we had to get her out of Pakistan. Hmm? Original croissant dropper. Stim blogger during the height of 2015 Bumbler. They say blocking is the best way to win an argument, but that's just cowardice talking. Look at this right. fucking monstrosity. Isabella Morgan, theater teacher. She, her, Cuban and Chilean. Liked Hamilton before it was cool. No longer likes Hamilton. Bitches be singing all the time and wonder why people call them birds. Dude, also there's like weird shit on their arms. There's supposed to be tats? I don't know. Fat mm. bitch with green hair. Look at this one. <laughs> oh my yes, god. Shit. Look at their ethnicity. Chinese and black. <laughs> Rocky Harrison, a PR specialist. Of course, they all have these pointless non-jobs. Won the spelling bee in sixth grade and is still riding that high. I mean, that 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 does crack. Fellas, is it gay to plan your wedding with a man you just met? Party yes. in the front, business in the front, yearning in the back. <sighs> Arihi Cooper, marriage I want, counselor. I, I, be him. I want to say things that I can't say on stream. <laughs> Samoan and white. Marriage is a scam created by the government to make people rely on others. God, this is so awful. No, that's government. That's government we just described. True. True. Government is a scam to make people rely on the state. Yes, exactly. Marriage, being cooperated by government is a part of that. Then I would agree with that. Claims romance is dead. Urines anyway. Yolanda also, you make it sound Solis. like people wouldn't. You make it sound like people wouldn't form wouldn't form couples without the government. Like, yeah, they the would. You one, fucking moron. This Ari Ari Arihi Cooper. This is a trans man. So it's actually a biological female. <clears throat> um, Yolanda Cerise, hairstylist. She, her hairstylist, who is Korean and French, looks very Korean and French to me. While she's wearing Don't like a fucking agree? Swedish milkmaid outfit. Hairstyle, do hairstylist doll listens to too much law dispute. Bitches say they love poetry and then go over after. Why are all the women called men. bitches? I don't know. You're worried about the wrong Dickens. Biggs Smallson, delivery driver. He him, black, openly bi and ready to fly. Six four since two thousand seven. Best pus driver on the block. Lead architect on the Friends to Dating to Friends Again pipeline. Look at this one. We got another one. Alonzo Davids, personal trainer. Don't hate, meditate. He, him. Afro, Afro Puerto Rican. Your angle and your devil. Namaste the fuck out of these DMs. Who needs Facetune when you have bougie film and 38 ring lights? Actual dad of the year. This guy, this gay guy has like two kids. That's part of his storyline. Anoki Black Moon, urban planner, she, he, them. Uh, this person is Ogalala Lakota Native American. Can full combo any rhythm game while blindfolded with both hands tied behind their back. Cosplaying a kin is just wearing your everyday outfit. Ashley Colum, professional gamer. She, her, Laotian and Ecuadorian. Calling people slurs in PvP isn't very gamer of you. Yes, oh, shut is. the fuck up. Yes, it is. How, how <laughs> you are not a gamer. With, I will smack the shit out of you if you ever say that. That is required by law. If you <laughs> PvP and you do not call your opponent the F and N word, you are not a gamer. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. I know. Holy shit. Okay. If you don't scream, Same fuck you. You're an asshole. Die, you <laughs> son of a bitch. You're not a gamer. That is, that is legit gamer lingo. If you are not super racist and you hate the world and everything breathing within the five meter radius of your pulse, you are not a fucking gamer. Oh, like this part's relevant, guys. You will like, comment, and subscribe or face the consequences. Oh, chat, you're being threatened now. <laughs> Jeez, what in the hell is that fucking Cat? thing? Oh my, yeah, look at this one. Oh my god. It's like a, it's a caricature. Oh my god. How is this not What, racist? Mr. T in a wig? I don't know. This got stretch marks and everything. Catherine Pienla, Afro Dominican, she her magazine editor. The country girl boss of the corporate world. Full time mother, part time beanie baby collector, beanie baby collector. Talking to people from your hometown is so 2005. And then here we have this character, by the way. I uh, This is the only uh, oh, straight. No, this character is, but he's the only straight and cis and white character in the game. 
Uh, he is described constantly as being smelly and dirty and unhygienic, and maybe like a school shooter. Keaton uh, Nervetti, film major, he, him, Italian. Future nepotism hire. Future nepotism hire showers twice a month. Wealth is a choice. Horror is a lifestyle. So they just shit on the one fucking white guy. <laughs> well, of course, he's an surprised. Anarchist shit. Yeah. Don't you want to fund this game? Don't you want to play it, guys? It's like so much fun. Video games. <laughs> so uh, I want to of, scoop uh, out my eyeballs with melon ballers. Well, speaking of successes, uh, the American Society of Magical um, can I find, like, compilation of this. Can I find a compilation of people saying it? Can I get Eric July or somebody to say this <laughs> for me? For well, like, saying Eric, can I get someone... It's literally the title of the fucking thing, Aiden. I know. Uh, You're not going to get in trouble for saying freaking Gary had it in the title of his video. I, I, no, I just wanted to find to, cause so, uh, Gary's got like, well, everyone does. Yeah. All, like all the people like Eric July and quarterback Garrett, Garrett and everybody saying the title wow, of it so it did, people don't it, have to. It didn't, it didn't even make a, a single million on opening. Nope. Nope. That's fucking bad. Unmitigated disaster. Barely managing to make a million dollars on opening. I mean, this is what you say you want. It's what you said you wanted, right? Like, they say that they want this stuff. Here it is. Again, like, the thing that, that everyone's been talking about this whole time is that, like, there there is a decent concept here. Because it was done in a Someone said Peele you're skit. not really white. <laughs> have you seen you this? Negro. By the way, Spoon, I don't know how much we can play of it, but, like, have you seen this? No. Peele skit? Just, hang on, it's actually funny. It's actually funny. No, no, like, Comedy Central is going to clap to shit out of Oh, you. that's true, don't. that's true. We're, we're clapped. Well, go watch the Key and Peele skit. And it's actually, like, funny. They've done a, they've done a good job of making it an amusing concept. You can't... It's not something you really make it into a whole movie. Maybe. But it's not what they did. Uh, as per information collected by the numbers, the Justice Smith-led film was barely able to pass the 1 million mark, making a I total of 1.3 million opening weekend, debuting at 1,000 theaters across the U.S. The film's production budget is kept under wraps. Wonder why these numbers are abysmal. To better illustrate, the American Society of Magical Negroes grossed a mere $524,000 on Friday and $470,000 on Saturday, uh, and an even more pathetic three ten on Sunday, seen a 34% pop from opening day. The weekend also saw the release of Lionsgate's Arthur uh, the King, a film based on the memoir of Swedish adventurer racer Mikael Lidnord, and the circumstances that led to him adopting a stray dog. So a movie about a dog, there you go. <clears throat> did way better. Of course it did. To put things into perspective... Arthur the King, starring Mark Wahlberg in the leading role, grossed a total of 7.6 million on opening, debuting in 3,000 theaters, landing the third position at the box office behind Dune Part Two, and second place, uh, in second place, and Universal Pictures' Kung Fu Panda Four in the top of the chart. The American Society of Magical Negroes had to settle for the box office office chart's ninth place, and word of mouth isn't doing the film any favors. So it's just it's fucked. I mean, you just said like we don't want anyone to watch this movie. Based on 19 critics, uh, it has a mixed reviews. Based on 19 critic reviews, for disappointing 52%. That's the critics who are all paid off to do this shit and ideologically possessed to do so. And 0.5 out of 10 for user reviews. 0.5. Now, of course, they're just going to say it's because they're racist. Maybe it just sucks. Sounds like it sucks. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know why it wouldn't suck. People of that. The whole thing, I mean, like, it, the trailers were like, the whole thing is that we just hate white people. That's the whole point of the film. And then you want to get white people to go see it. I mean, some, maybe some self hating whites will, but I don't think so. Nah. No, I don't think so. Experience with racism. It's funny because as black audiences, many marginalized persons can attest to, we've had to find ourselves in white stories. Well, I don't think anyone's finding you in this story. Sounds like nobody wants to see it. Funny. However, this might be a colossal failure. You want to know why it's a colossal failure, according to the LA Times? Too timid. It's not racist enough. What? Yep. As provocatively titled as it is, The American Society of Magical Negroes, the first feature from actor-turned-writer director Kobe, uh, actor-turned-writer-director Kobe Libby, is neither the regressive atrocity that early online commentators feared, nor the hard-hitting satire of systemic racism that it may have intended to be. Libby's debut tracks the potency 
of Boots Riley's Off the Rails, Sorry to Bother You, Jordan Peele's Chilling Get Out, or Spike Lee's Unpredictable Bamboozled Movies. It observed the Black experience with a blistering and often um, blisteringly funny perspective. <clears throat> a, central trope, a central trope refers to a Black movie character whose sole purpose in a narrative is to aid the white protagonist in his pursuits. These magical individuals are presented here as a collectivized as collectivized into a secret organization whose members gain supernatural abilities. Their mission, appeasing the white majority, not because they endorse such backwards thinking, but as a survival mechanism. From coddling mediocrity to solving marital issues, all of their efforts aim to prevent impending violence. So in other words, like, and then again, this is from the trailer, like, if you don't make white people feel comfortable, they'll kill black people. That's the premise of the film. So black people get magical powers, and rather than, I don't know, stopping violence against blacks, they coddle whites. Great idea. Fantastic. If you have magic powers, why would you not just, I don't know, stop people from doing violence? <laughs> Anywho, so one clever invention is the white tears meter, a floating dial that those in society can see when a white person is in distress, infantilizing white people as entities oblivious to their own privilege and the trauma they inflict on others. Libby makes one of his most successful statements, convincing the power dynamic to play in every aspect of quotidian life, and, by the way, of absurdism, putting the responsibility back on white America. Dude, what the fuck is this? LA Times. After learning the ropes, Aaron, that's the main character, assigned client, the white person he must support, is revealed to him. He's an average guy working in a cliche tech company. Their friendship moves along smoothly until Aaron's romantic ambitions with their co-worker Lizzie in whom Jason is also interested, threaten not only his mission, but the entire society. If one of them goes off script, they all lose their powers. Uh, okay, so again, the movie is predictable. Unfortunately, Libby leans too much on dialogue-heavy exchanges to illustrate his concepts. While pertinent, these spelled-out articulations ring like segments from a lecture crammed into, a, into the crevices of an overstuffed plot. Goddamn. In a comedy sketch that overstates its welcome, aka that Key and Peel sketch, society undermines both its caustic intent and its romantic comedy subplot. It's not that the two are inherently incompatible, yet kind of they are. In fact, one can see that Libby introduced the latter to allow Aaron to experience being seen beyond stereotypes, but that's not enough time for the amorous liaison to develop into something that feels more than a schematic add-on. The movie's predictably speechified resolution, with Aaron literally taking the stage to speak his truth, finally renders the sociopathic critique mild and inconsequential, a disappointing outcome for a premise that had the potential to be truly incendiary. In other words, it wasn't racist enough for the LA Times. That's why they think it. So again, you can't please these people ever. Ever. There is no point in trying. It's a movie made for black racists. For, for black people who hate white people. Specific, that's the, the only people that's made for it. For black people who only want to go to a movie because they're like, man, I real hate whitey. That's why they would want to go to see this movie. That's the only purpose, right? And it's not racist enough for them. So it's made for no one. As all of this shit is. It's made for no one. Wait, that's the same. Okay, uh, two-thirds of a U.S. adults would rather wait to watch movies on streaming than go to the movies. That's about it. Hollywood's dying. Let it burn and collapse and crumble. Get fucked. Uh, I don't care. You've shown that you hate your audience, so people won't go watch your trash. Bye. This is disgusting. Did you see the spoon? The, the plinth, if you don't know. Um, the fourth plinth in Trafalgar Square is a, for many years, has been a place for artists to install statues of different uh, types. The new one has been selected for the fourth plinth. Have you seen it, Spoon? Mm -mm. Here it is. Look at that thing. This is, this is going to be in Trafalgar Square. This. It's an abomination. It sure is. I mean, it, it's on every imaginable level. This is hideous. It looks like an emoji. <laughs> it does, though. It's so <laughs> awful. It, it, it does. It's just huge, fat ass, disgusting. I mean, like it's so, it's simplistic, awful. The, what's the, the anatomy? It's, very waxy. The oh, it's just terrible. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck even is that? That's the that's the statue that's gonna go up in Trafalgar Square. Here's the other one that won too. I don't really. This one doesn't bother me as much because it's just an abstraction, I guess. Kind of looks like an ice or something. I don't know. 
<clears throat> oh, no, this one lost, did it? This one might... Two are declared winners, yeah, so this one will go up as two, I guess. But, um... Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. It's kind of stuff that normally goes on the fourth plinth. And now it's gonna be, uh, gonna be this. Fantastic. Very strong and brave. Strong and brave, guys. They have really Aiden is in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not my type. Uh, Once. So, so black zombies are racist. This is coming. I was waiting for this, by the way. I've been waiting for this for about a year. Um, Resident. This is from IGN, the Resident Evil game that cannot be remade. So, of course, Resident Evil Four remake has come out. Oh yeah, seem uh, to do a video on this. Uh, I love RE Five. I love RE Five. Spoon, I'd love to play RE Five with you sometime. I love hey, to do re uh, replays of it. Well, um, you'd like it, because you go to Africa. Like, see, I'm going to read to what they say. By the way, this game is not racist. It just takes place in Africa. It came out in, what, 2008? Yes, it, it takes place in a fictional world. It takes place in, a, Fiction, in, in yes. a fictionalized Africa, yes. By the way, I quite uh, like the fact that um, they've managed to fuck themselves out into a corner with this, because if you make this oh, no. game and you have black people, yeah. that's racist. If you make it... Without black people, it's saying, well, there's not inclusion because so this was where else would they be? Because, you know, yes. and if you if you feature them as a mixed one, well, then you're just saying colonialism happened. So, so Spoon, it was actually an <laughs> issue way back when this game originally came out, is that no one gave they were even back then, they were gay. Everyone, that, all the zombies are black because it takes place in Africa. No one cares. Um, and so what they... So they made them like kind of, they like put like a pale, like white kind of pasty coloring over them on some of them to make them look less black, but they're still black because they're Africans. But there were people even at the time who said that it was racist. Like, why would it would be racist? Because then, like, then if you made them white, you made a whole bunch of them white, then wouldn't, then that would be racist. It's not representing Africa. There's no winning with these people. They're insane. Game's 15th anniversary. Yeah, I was reading it here. Okay. It's claimed that, uh, clear that moving forward chronologically will take Capcom's remakes into the series' weakest era. I love RE5. Get fucked. Because um, I love RE5's... I, loved, I love, love RE5's co-op. It's so much fun. When do they get mad about it? Um, cover shooter designs. Blah, blah, blah. They're waffling. <clears throat> Design appears to not just be a misguided attempt to follow Western successes, but also of its predecessor with Resident Evil 4, Shinji Mikami, definitely reinvented the series, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're just trying to... Okay. Faithful remake of RE5 would break Capcom's seven-year streak of brilliant survival horror. All of this is to say that a faithful remake of RE5 would break Capcom's seven-year streak of brilliant survival horror game. It's Why? time that this series' reset point, RE7, was a reinvention of the very first game, Haunted House, that grew ever larger as you unlocked new rooms, yes. Remakes then, of course... Dude, they're just get to the point. Get to your point. Sent in a fictional West African country, RE5's pr primary antagonists are black people. Yes, technically, it's the Ouroboros virus that protagonist Chris Redfield and Sheva Alomar, you dip. Uh, but the thank you. And if the is her name even in here? Did I just know it off the top of my head? As I probably do because I love RE5. But the parasite's host is depicted as a nation of mobs and primitives who are violent even before their infection. No, they're not. They're all infected. Sheva says it outright. Have you even, not played the okay. game? Have you, clearly you haven't. Sheva okay, says they're infected. True? But it's but it's it's but it's not true if you've played the game. They find this like underground cares? tribe. Even and if they, it was, they find they, these they tribal be. people, and Sheva says specifically they've been infected. They're not inherently violent towards you. I'm I'm i have okay. Yeah, have I played RE5 30 times? Yes. But <laughs> Yeah, it's probably close to that. I've probably played RE5 through 30 times. Because I, I just do speedruns of it. Intentionally or not, RE5's positions, positions Africa as the Dark Continent, an uncivilized... He, again, this fucking lunatic IGN writer, Matt Perslow, forgets to mention that the other player character is black. <clears throat> uh, where am I? Um, let's see. This is so stupid. Uh, doot, 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 doot. clever reinventions concept. No, why are they mad? Why are they get mad about this. I whatever. Okay, stupid. They're gonna get mad about it. Fuck! 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 I I totally lost my oh wait, dark. Con. 
Africa. <clears throat> Uncivilized world, however, in a disease population needs to be gunned down via Western intervention, in name of global security. <clears throat> it's Tricell that's responsible for it. Western, the Western, Western intervention is responsible for it in the first place. Tricell, the, the remnants of Umbrella are. I can't, I'm so intrigued by this. This insensitive treatment of the people of color was hotly debated even as early as RE5's debut trailer. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, that is true. Fuck off. Yeah, point out the game's uncomfortable post-colonial imagery, the arguments. I think he has contributed well into the game's release window with IGN's former editor-in-chief, Hillary Goldstein, <clears throat> having also wrestled with the subject. But that was 2009, a time when race was apparently a debate rather than a reality. Don't rem Look, if you're going to make it fun, make it fun. Just give me cool co-op again. I'll be happy with it. I love RE5. Um, Wizards of the Coast being gay as usual. Go. I have a, a lot of fond memories of these early years of the game. And, um, and it felt like I was the right person to be making this, you know. And it's, uh, it's important that this is... Oh my god. This, they're talking this this speech, right? This conversation. They're talking about the origins of Dungeons and Dragons, right? You guys, just get you up to speed of what we're looking at here. Obviously, Gary Gygax is dead, but the this is about the making of Dungeons and Dragons. This little tool. What's his question about the making of Dungeons and Dragons, the development of the original historical document? So there are yeah. things. It was a different time. So we've had an inclusivity review. Of yeah, all these materials. Multiple. So oh. let's, let's inclusivity take a step review. Back. Let's clarify. There are materials in original Dungeons and Dragons that would never pass yeah. our inclusivity reviews today. Uh, and a lot of it is you can some of it you can understand. Like, okay, these are a bunch of war gamers, and they're using armies from history. And I'm so, Mike Mysterio. I haven't had time to go over the Nickelodeon stuff yet, so we'll cover that next week. When they create a warrior class yeah. for Dungeons and Dragons, they call it the fighting man. Yeah, right. because men fight. Yeah. Because that's what they were used to. No, they're used and to. It's they reality. were all men. They were all white dudes from Lake Geneva and the Twin Cities. Why is this a problem? But that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Like, right. there's a lot of material in this book, and I won't go over all of it, but it would not pass our inclusivity reviews today. Good. Well, we couldn't change it. It's, it's history. What we can do is acknowledge it and show how far we've come. Oh my God. Because that's not D&D &D anymore, yeah. right? D&D &D gets more diverse and uh, has a larger pause audience it, it. No, every day. No, no, no. It is not about representation. It is about your cunting, toxic, Fuck off politics. Yes. And I want all of it to burn in hell. It's insufferable. Every I just want single one of you that is the ever whole... associated with this fucking ideology, you are a cancer on the stain of humans, asshole, and you need to fuck off and rot in hell. The thing that's crazy is that, like, the whole point of D&D &D is that it's imagination. You can do all kinds of crazy shit. I imagine, I would like anything. to imagine a world of only white people where I don't have to deal with any of this shit. Because yeah. I'm yeah, sick of this fucking ideology. That new, Just them, them making get it into gay. a corner, segregate yourselves, and then fucking die off on your shitty ideology that no one likes. Yeah, Rat King of the Smug, yeah, we defeated you, we got you to capitulate. That's exactly the, that, this little smug dude he's talking to, that's the exact... Kind of. He's got the face of a fucking rodent. Yeah. The more diverse the game becomes, the more people of Even, yeah. different genders and ethnic backgrounds and faiths you know, no, see no, themselves no. in the game. No, they don't. Then no, they, they don't. Go make why? Their own versions of the game. Every yes, you they know They could what, do that dude? before. Correct. That's why we play Pathfinder and not your gay shit anymore. You do stuff like this. And, and Pathfinder's not much better. Like, they're woke as fuck, too. But at least they don't fuck it up as bad as fucking Wizards of the Coast does. More players start to see themselves represented in the game. The more diverse the creators get, no. the more diverse the players become. No! What? Where's no, the evidence don't. for that? Evidence this! With data! That's the way it should be. Nope. So, 
this they, this, they always say this like, oh, we're oh. just going to make everything more diverse and we'll get more diverse people. No, 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 no. Dungeons and Dragons appeals to white male nerds. It always has been and it always will. Yes, there are people like who don't fall into that. Sure, but you're not going to force people who don't who aren't white male nerds to be interested by by putting uh black disabled dwarves into it, you know? Book is very interesting because <clears throat> I think it really highlights how far oh, yeah. the audience has come. How far you've fallen. Yeah. And, and how the game has changed. Yeah, over for the, the worse. Years, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. How it's played, who plays it, and how it's created. I exactly, Siege. It's not about seeing yourself in fantasy, moron. He has lost the plot. I don't play D&D &D to be myself. I don't play Pathfinder to be myself. And I do end up to a certain degree, because you can't kind of escape from that. It's the player of Avatar uh, interaction. Uh, Jimmy Banks, 2012, 2014, I can't remember the exact date. It's either 12 or the player avatar uh, interaction instrument, right? Sure. I fall into the symbiote camp, and that's mostly for video games, but I think it applies to D&D &D as well. I don't know if it has been applied. It should be, though. That instrument should be. Uh, still, <clears throat> fucking ridiculous. You fu you've lost the plot. You've lost the plot. Plot. Um, six youths to be charged in Southwick. Racial bullying incident involving mock slave auction. Now, multiple <laughs> users are facing charges in connection with a serious racial bullying incident that occurred last month in Southwick, Massachusetts, involving a mock slave auction on social media. They don't actually show any evidence of this, so I have no idea what happened. Like, I'd like to see, like, what, what, actu what did they actually post? Uh, hate speech and race-based bullying occurred on February 8th. Handham District Attorney Anthony Juluni uh, said at a news conference. Thursday that he learned of it a week later. How old do you think these kids Six are before I get down to face charges in connection to a bullying incident that involved, among other things, a mock slave auction on social media. The Hamden DA says a group was created on Snapchat in early February. It also says the teens placed bids of two to four dollars to purchase black students at the school. And the district says they face long term suspensions. All six teens are charged with threat to commit a crime. Now, it is unclear when the six will appear. How old are these kids? Excuse me, mm -hmm. these teens, youths, as they describe them. Mm -hmm. Who are now facing criminal charges, by the way, Spoon. <clears throat> How old do you think they are for this bullshit? 15. Try 13. 13 and 14. What the fuck? Yep. Criminal charges on 13 oh, and 14 close. year olds. I know, but still. 13 and 14 year olds. Criminal charges. I mean, it's in juvie court, but still. And this is insane. Two were suspended for 25 days. One was suspended for 45 days. <clears throat> and now we're going to face potentially criminal charges. Hatred and racism have no place in the community. And where this behavior becomes criminal, I will ensure that we act with swift resolve. As we here, uh, if we did here to uncover and bring light the light of justice. Bullying, especially when it resolves race, is an insidious force. I wonder if it's a white um, Within a school community and within a community at large, it's deeply damaging to victims. Harassment. <clears throat> I got a couple things. Aiden. Tired. Yep. I have to know that wake, they, uh, I have to that wake you up uh, soon. Uh, yep. No, they keep, I've been up since 5 o'clock this morning. Okay, all right, let's end on this then. American Cancer Society blames traditional values for high cancer rates in gays. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? What the fuck did I just read? According to the Cancer Society's new report, exposure to these stressors may lead to increased prevalence of mental health or substance abuse disorders and unhealthy behaviors that increase cancer risk. What are those stressors that force LGBT uh, cancer sufferers to find solace in the bottle, whether it holds alcohol or pills? The ACS says... The LGBTQ cancer survivors are more likely to have poor physical and mental health, have a higher prevalence of cigarette smoking and alcohol abuse, and frequently experience homophobia and discomfort expressed by healthcare providers. What does the ACS mean by homophobia? After all, homophobic, whatever. Uh, according to the ACS, more than half of LGBTQ adults have experienced harassment, including slurs, microaggressions, sexual harassment, and violence, and one in three have experienced discrimination simply trying to use the bathroom. This discrimination is commonly among people of color and extends to healthcare settings. Oh, in other words, off. 
microaggressions. Well, this is just the point. You got it, right? So we'll end on this on this fine note that uh, apparently microaggressions are giving gays cancer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save the rest of the stuff for, for later, guys. Uh, let me make a note here so that I know where we stop. American Cancer Society blames traditional values for some high... I can't believe I just read that out loud. See, I told you. I told you. You'd want to see that. You'd, you'd, you'd want to see that one before you go. So I'll give you a little bit of a laugh. All right, guys. Uh, I didn't read show. The, the super chats. I got to read the rest of the super chats, mm -hmm. though. Um, you can hang on, Spoon. I'll take a moment here. Uh, Deadpool Kid for 10. Thank you guys so much for all the donations. Thank you so much. Uh, for 10 says, Afuera, down with the Hydra. Yes, down with the Hydra. Lamented Guide for 10 gives a uh, emoji of a little guy dancing with maracas. Thank you. Lamented Guide. Galactic Emperor Schlurm for two says, man, Oberman is always having a real one. I know he sure is. Riff Dude, Oberman says, is, is legit a mental patient. Like, I swear to God. Yeah, like, he's he, insane. He, he uses Twitter to become like this, this alter ego of just like an unhinged fucking loon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rick for two says, was Ingersoll Lockwood's kids book prophetic? Oh, perhaps. King Tesseract for 10 says, I'd like your take on the fact that capitalism is unsustainable because end user wants a decentralized network of goods and services, but producer wants to monopolize and make shittier services, not comic. The uh, producer doesn't necessarily want to make shittier services. They only want to make it shittier if the consumer will accept it, right? Um, so it's sort of a trade-off there. Ultimately, it's going to be what the consumer is willing to pay for. Um, we did have to think about that more. Um, it's a little bit late in the night to, to ask me a serious question about capitalism. But um, ultimately, that's the, the thing. People will pay for what they, they find valuable, right? It, so if you can produce a shittier service and people will still pay the amount of money for it, well, <clears throat> then that's people being willing to pay for a shittier it service. It also rots the system if there's a monopoly yeah. with these crappy services. So the, 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 only one person... Yeah. Um, see, th that's, that's the thing. In the hypothetical there... No one really ends up the winner because the one person just ends up making a crappy service and the customer is just disgruntled. Mm -hmm. So that's more like the cade when there is no capitalism. Yeah. Like when you when you have a monopoly and just one person, you don't actually have capitalism. Yeah. Exactly. Lancer Five says maybe if Destiny was more mean, was a more mean spirited guy, he wouldn't have been cucked by his wife. Oh dude. <laughs> Horwitz Five again, Horwitz Five says, Diabetes <laughs> is gonna get her out of that seat. <laughs> oh yeah. For another five, Corbett's five Morgan Horwitz says, plus her name is hyphenated, she'll be alone soon enough. Oof. We'll I think I said too many base things in the stream. Yeah. You are free to compliment the regime no more. Yep, that's basically all you're allowed to do. Yeah. Jernigi for five says, the first rule of dating sims, the characters need to be attractive. Exactly. Synapse for five says, they rage and see that the fact that the most popular character in their game is the one dude that's just a basic white guy. Yeah, it actually did make them very angry about that. Has a hop for 10 says she made a black only queer dating sim and a bejeweled clone. That's that's the game she's made, yes. She made niche entries in already niche genres that are barely game. Most are free browser games, and she wants $15, not a serious price. Exactly. Has yeah, a hop for another five says fairy tales, but with black people, cyberpunk, but with black people, snow white, but with black people. <laughs> such a creative woman. <laughs> exactly. Like, she got, oh she got tons God, of ideas. That is, uh, that is absolutely I mean, they are, to be stuff. fair, she's getting her snow white with a black woman thing. That's happening with Rachel Zegler. That's not really Snow for White, five. then. <laughs> for five says, there have been African empires. Africans uh, seem to be largely averse to legacy, so they've been swallowed by the sands with rare exceptions like Mali. Yeah, there have been. Ulgreath for five says, the uh, advent of wide proliferation of audiobooks should have satisfied the people who love stories but are illiterate. You'd think so, right? Yeah. But no, they gotta, they gotta get their own. They don't care. They just want money. <laughs> Sorry. My apologies. Um, stop. Oh. Horwitz, Fimer, and Horwitz for another 10 says, Is it just me? Or do woke games tend to be walking sims, text based choose your own adventures, or match three games? Yep. Yep, because they yeah, can't actually much. make anything of value. Lance for two says, Josh uh, no, no, is no, not what I would that, regard it's... as a man <laughs> based. I think it's, it's, it's not only that, it's also because they actually they want to make something that isn't of European origin with European origin stories because what they ultimately yeah. want to make is like to stand on their own but they yeah. can't because they suck yeah yep spoon did a stream with a cool fox study yeah I, I did um 
I don't think I'll stream with, with Kirsch again, to be honest. I think I actually scared her. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she because oh. ev everyone just thought, like, oh, look, it's but, like, Kirsch is going to be too base for me. I'm like, there's no way a woman is going to outbase me. Like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Oh, no. And I think I think I think I went a little bit too heavy on her uh -oh. stream. I haven't heard it yet, so I'll have to. Uh, yeah, I, I think I went. I think I kind of scared the poor girl. You went a little ham. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, she was Batman nice though. Actually, I was very nice to her. Nice. I'm glad you. Well, I'm sorry if it went a little too extreme, but I'll have to check it out. Though. No. Uh, Batman for five says my favorite game is the Devil May Cry. Is Devil May? Cry. Uh, is according to her not a real game because it's mostly gameplay and action. I don't know if she said it that way. She just says, I think she does think that like action games are real games. She doesn't like games that have, you know, gameplay. <laughs> Lance, who's been a member for 10 months. Thank you, Lance. Says, you know what's funny? There is a giant corporation that has mostly non-whites making video games that have no problem making money or getting funding. It's called Nintendo. So what's your problem, lady? <laughs> Good question. Good question. Uh, Jazuke Taizago has been a member for seven months says, I want to remind everyone that the government seems to be paying these psychos with your taxpayer money. Yes, I'll be covering that in my video on it. We also have covered it covered it two weeks in a row. In a row. Two weeks in a row. Essentially, uh, last two weeks. Going over some of the information on that. In order to invade and infect your industry and games, companies, and corporations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hazel Hoppa for two says, five people made Valheim. Many games are made by one. Exactly. Yeah, and Valheim's great. Um, just some guy for two. Not, I think, not, not the same just says. If you want some bass music, look up Peace Dozer. Will do. Peace Dozer. I'm guessing it's, it's a killed it. And Gary Thomas for five says, Hey, dynamic duo. Enjoy the stream and the stream spoon did with the cool fox lady. Hope you guys have a good night. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I know spoon's getting tired. I'm tired too because I'm also sick. We do have some more stuff to cover, but I'm not getting through it tonight. Too tired, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll see you all next week. And we might do tanky tier squad this weekend we'll see about it if not this weekend then sometime soon um it's gonna be a while for my video game gamer geek review thing with all the data in it about um, all the research to come out just because i have that huge trip as i explained at the beginning of the stream but it's just no I, i'm thinking like could i do that in two weeks <clears throat> not really not when i'm starting out sick uh anywho either way there'll be stuff going on the whole time I, we will still be streaming i'll have my gear overseas Wow, when I say overseas, I mean back in the U.S. <laughs> all right. See you guys all uh, next week. Have a wonderful week, friends, and bye-bye. Nice.